is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Fudge Mapper. This is the Elder Scrolls podcast. I'm Scott here with Mike and Drew as always, and with the Iceberg videos, we've had Camel along as well here again, and we're going to be going deeper into the iceberg. We're getting towards the end, but doubt we'll get it completely done this episode, but let's see how we go. So let's get into it. So we left off at the Elven Lie. So now we're at Tahasfat and Tabalus. So he's just the character in the Fighters Guild who you go and he asks you to get the Dwemer Puzzle Cube, right? But I'm sure there's some kind yeah, of... Yeah, he's the, the drill thing. master for the Fighters Guild in Morrowind. Mm. Um, he does talk about the, uh, the Egg of Time a bit. I cannot read and write Dwemer myself, <laughs> but, that is a tr but this is a truly interesting find. Um, he's just talking about, you know, the Egg of Time, this book mm -hmm. filled with maybe it's, Dwemer. I don't know, maybe there's some deep law thing about why he wanted the Dwemer puzzle box. Yeah. yeah. I, I reckon Has that's it. I reckon someone came up with a theory once about him. Yeah. I don't know if there's anything much to those theories or if it's a bit more like, is he Jagar Thun question mark? <laughs> is he say yes, he is he, you know? Uh, yeah, I think that's probably it. Let's move to elf sightings, which um, could be a variety of things. It kind of makes me think about um, the contradictions between the ideas of like Topol the pilot navigating around Tamriel and not seeing like elves, but then other reports of elves having been in certain places at that time. Like, like, yeah, like the, the Falma snow elves like should have been there or or they could possibly not have been too yeah but, but it, it's like it's you don't know when they split. what would the i mean potentially the same case mm -hmm. for the dwemer right except maybe they were underground so they well seen, actually but, even the yeah. same for the bosma really just if you do buy into mm -hmm. the ooze story more and that it's not a direct um descendants from like ultima or something which i personally do believe but I just thought this was a meme, honestly, when it said elf sightings, like you see an elf every single <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, game. Game. Could it have some, any yeah. city. You'd think they would say so, but could it have something to do with the sea elves and how people have claimed to have, you know, spotted them and doing different things? I know they're in Elder Scrolls Online, but... Yeah. That's the thing. It could be applied to so many things. Yeah. All right. Sea gods. Um, I guess this is kind of like the absence of sea gods. Well, the only the only new, the only sea gods like explicitly that we hear about is in like uh, they're not like inherently sea gods, but the Khajiit interpretation of like Hermaeus Mora, you know, maintaining sort of these undersea libraries and so. Oh yeah, on. like the waters Unless of oblivion some... too is a little, you know, you could think of yeah, it like... but I don't know if it, but yeah, I guess you don't have many of those. Like you don't have your like Poseidon import yeah. or anything. I mean, into the Elder I know um, our favorite man Kirkbride was saying how. He didn't actually, um, he was like, kind of like, oh, I should have put sea gods in there and kind of was like kicking himself for not doing it. So maybe there's some secret sea gods we don't know yeah. about in the deep. The last war, which I think is just a reference to kind of like the end of the Kalpar and the start of a new one and some big final battle. But if you look i wasn't that yeah. i feel like that was referenced in a kirkbride text the last war i don't it might even be i might be inventing that i'm not yeah. sure so, so man <laughs> some of these get so vague that i feel like they could be applied to like everything you know what i mean the last war of like you know what i mean there's not enough details yeah i guess because i mean if it's what we talked about in a previous episode where it's the idea that Shaw is assembling an army to fight the uh to fight trinimac and oriel's armies of old Elnafe again then that's like the start and end of the cowper we talked about it's like that like, could be that uh, but hold, hold on <laughs> yeah hold i don't on. know here we get it one sec i'm gonna do a control f last war okay here we go mysterious akavir um the red guards destroyed yakuda so they could make their journey all men and Murno tamriel is the nexus of creation where the last war will happen where the gods unmade Lorcan and left their adamantine tower of secrets. Who knows what the Akaviri think of Tamriel, but ask yourself, why have they tried to invade it three times or more? Okay, yeah. Yeah. I guess that's... Um, so that's that's kind of the thing, same yeah. thing. And it kind of yeah. plays on, like, what I think it was the last episode we talked about, like, why Tamriel is also called the arena, because it's, like, the place where mm -hmm. they're all going to come and 
fight mm. all the races flock to. What was the source of that text, Mike? Um, Mysterious Akavir. Is that an in-game book? Yeah, that's canon. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. 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 Well, I guess we'll move to continent pushing. <laughs> which is this like, is like what we have on Earth? Like the idea of continents moving around and having... Like tectonic plates? <laughs> I mean, the only like, you know, there's... Um, I f- forget uh, which, which... It's not the Anuad, it's the other one, isn't it? The other... The monomyth, isn't it? The one that explains that it was all one continent. One of those. One of those in... Go- well, like one of the ideas is that, you know, er- at the beginning, Tamriel, Akavi, Yakuta, Atmora, they're all this one big supercontinent like a pangea kind of thing because the annuad does touch on it as well but i think the idea i mean they could have moved around but the idea was that it was one thing but rather than anything moving like loads of chunks just sank to the point where they became separate continents without actually necessarily having to move just because land in between them sank Mm. yeah i mean outside as a result of the (laughs) is that like a text with vivek where he like literally pushes a continent maybe I feel like that's some weird stuff that we'd, that Coke would write about. Uh, I mean, they, he had a battle that made, like, the West Gash, <laughs> the, like, area river, but I don't think he actually... Perhaps in some Kirkbride stuff, I don't know. But... Uh, I guess we can move on to gods yeah. are imaginary. This is a very primary school take. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean... Because I mean... they're only sustained by belief, right? Yeah, like, the Elder Scrolls is all driven on belief like most of the the god stuff all the gods derive their power and then like you know with um talos and stuff like the idea they're trying to erase talos by erasing his worship and then you when you're controlling the narrative you're like it's kind of like a weird like literal take where the god is real if you believe it's but real. it's kind of but also contradictory a, as well a, because i don't know there are just some gods in daedra that would have kind of so few worshippers but still exist and would have you know power more than any mortal would have to be honest, I think the the whole I think that applies more so to the Aedra yeah. as as the earth bones and so on. It's like the different cultures impart their own sort of cultural views and beliefs on the Aedra. So that's when you get like mm. you know Kinarthi and Kinareth and Kine, um, as opposed to just one singular. But it does. There are thing. differences but, in cultures with Daedra. Like the Khajiits look at Daedra versus yeah. other cultures, so it gets confusing. I just feel like you know Periite would exist regardless of worship that might just be like a bias that i have and it is he is sustained by worship yeah like it just feels like they can exist without worship because i i don't think the gods go yeah. away but i mean you could almost look at it in a um in a meta way in that you know you have um eben Arm as a kind of important god of war but then if the devs decide to kind of write mm. them out of the canon then in that sense, they're imaginary because just because the god of war is not being worshipped, it doesn't mean he should disappear. But if the devs decide they want him to disappear, then he's mm. then he's never mentioned That's what I was again. thinking. It's, so it it's literally a metaphor like for the devs. Because when you look at uh, Daggerfall yeah. and stuff, there's a bunch of gods that are never mentioned again. And it's yeah. uh, the devs are the belief system. The devs forgot about him. Therefore, it's gone. <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. The real red pill is it's all imaginary because this is a fantasy world <laughs> that we've... <laughs> that's all in our heads. What, wait, what? <laughs> um, what's this next one? Arno Telecon? No idea. Hmm. I have zero uh, idea. It's like a company that sends me um, letters about changing my internet <laughs> plan. Wow, there's not even a Google search. Like, Even when I typed it in, I've just come to some archive uh, of our own dot org and it's like what yeah, that's the only thing that i can see the maraud mm. yeah oh hold on is it spelt wrong because sometimes this iceberg meme spells things wrong mm, so there's if like... i go aaron a reno telecon okay hold on this is like a european <laughs> carnivorous big beast thing um, okay. Okay, Wait, how so did you spell it how they spelt it, but put an E after AR, like Arena Telecom. There's a, I'm scared to Google anything because my keyboard's so loud. There's a few different right. monsters, but... Let's call that, and let's <laughs> yeah. talk about the next one then, The Calling, <laughs> which is a reference to um, the Dwemer's what was before like a telepathic ability but is now a uh 
<laughs> Telephone is, hell no. Is now basic, but thanks to some like later ESO lore has sort of been explained as like, you know, basically headsets that they can communicate with almost. Yeah. So, um, uh, Chimeri Quay. So, you know, the Chimer's big exodus off to Resdane and so on. There is, I think it's a Kirkbride stuff about the idea that they went, some of them went even further to the islands of Kathnaque, which is like a bunk, like included in a bunch of sort of islands, kind of like Inslee and Roscrea and the other places. Is that, the, is that like between Akavir and Tamriel? Um, I think so. I've had a, actually, I'm like, assuming so because where they are in the direction from Morrowind. There's like six but, islands around there. Little islands. Yeah. Well, the whole Chimeri Quay thing is just the idea, I guess, that there's Chima on, on that island. Kathna Quay, yeah. But I don't know how much there is to it outside of that. It's just based on a forum post by Michael Kirkbride, apparently. So, um, I think there's even a mod. I swear there's even a mod. I've seen, like, a Morrowind mod for some, like, island where the Chima went and kept following Azura unchanged or something. Like, they weren't turned into Dunmar. It's just a Morrowind 3 mod. Uh, Elder Scrolls 3 mod, but yeah. Morrowind hmm. 3... That's what I want. That's what I want to play. Give me some Morrowind 2. Um, 2027, man. Yeah. Everything said about Talos is true. Um, I mean, okay. It's just like, like what, maybe. Like, sure. Well, as in like all of the origins, the like the potential origins uh, are simultaneous. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's probably it getting into that, yeah. that same sort of like mythical take where like truth is malleable because it's controlled by sort of like myth. And so everything has like some kind of nugget of truth, if you know what I mean. Yeah, because like if it's just a guy born in um, High Rock in Alcare or whatever, he can also be the Atmoran kind of like prophesized Talos Stormcrown character while also being the general of Kula Cain, while also becoming Tiber Septim because he just changed his name. So he, he is all of those things at once. Yeah, yeah, but then there are also just completely um, contradictory like ideas. Like, Is there a yeah. dragon I- break theory about Talos? Where all these things happen and then they all merged into the one Talos when yeah, the timeline so came back. Well, there, there's because it's when the Mantella, uh, the the um, the Numidium gets used, right? Is is that when it Because there's the all idea happens? that Talos isn't a god in the arena Daggerfall sort of timeline kind of thing. That basically once um, the whole Mantella thing's used and Zurin Arctus' soul and everything, it's all it all recombines into the Oversoul and then you actually get Talos then in that dragon break and then it's kind of like Talos has always been a, a, a thing and then he cha- you know, changes jungle Cyrodiil into normal Cyrodiil and yada yada. Um, but yeah, it's the whole idea that Talos is the Oversoul of Zurin Arctus, like Hjolti early beard, like otherwise like Tiber Septum or, and, um, and Izmir Wolfarth. And it gets compli- complicated and convoluted. But <laughs> um, I guess what this is trying to say is like all of it's true, yeah. like all different versions. But I guess it's the same way that like technically there's truth to like, you know, you can't coincide. And I guess it's the importance of myth, but all the creation stories are different in some way. You know, like the Nords versions, Elf versions, Yakutan versions. But there's all sort of like um, a core, like what they say, like a monomyth. There is a core to all of it, one singular sort of myth that they're all just kind of different versions of so there's a core truth well how about we move on to tigers equals dragons and i mean the first thing that i know we had tigers equals quas before but uh this makes me think of like toshraka um Mm. and the capitan yeah like the leader of the tiger dragons of capitan yeah i don't know where else they're going with it though beyond that like outside (laughs) of that (laughs) It could be just how he became like this dragon and everything involved with that. Yeah, could be. And then maybe maybe more of them are turning yeah. into a, a dragon as well or something. Um, everything Vivek says is a lie. Now, <laughs> this could also be very well true. Like, like Vivek, I guess anyway, and as, as especially being a reflection of Mafala, is like a paradoxical like dual being so it's the same as like i was kind of trying to explain i think in the last episode that like he is both telling the truth when he says he didn't kill nerevar but he's also kind of lying because in a prior timeline that no longer exists anymore he did if that makes sense gemini trait yeah (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) um but yeah so i i guess everything he says could be also taken as a lie or a truth i guess even Mm. There's probably a lot of complicated stuff there. Mm-hmm. Okay, I love this one. This one's hilarious. Raymond heard Pelinor. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. 
when he yelled out his name, it was heard. Yeah, I guess it just echoed through time until Riemann was around. Well, and it, then, when do you think he heard is it? There any, want to take it? Yeah, is there any text saying that Riemann heard a battle cry out of nowhere? Like, <laughs> no, I don't think so. But if <laughs> you want to take a hyperliter, he's lying about it at 4 a.m. <laughs> there are examples. <laughs> <laughs> There are examples of like, you know, like time wounds and stuff like that. So, and especially with Pelinor kind of being, you know, as a time traveling cyborgy type character, like you can kind of imagine perhaps that there is where he yelled it. Maybe there is some kind of time wound type thing, like there's some type of high Rothgar or, or just, you know what I mean? His echo sent forward in time or something like that. But I don't know the relevance of this theory. Like, what does this mm. theory even prove like what is it how does it actually further the discussion of like really like what's the relevance of it oh he heard him cool that's about yeah. it you know yeah. uh <laughs> the tribunal <laughs> the never <laughs> actually existed i feel like this one's pretty whack it's it just, just sounds a bit silly to me <laughs> i feel yeah trying to trying to justify that at all i'm like i can't be bothered that's just ridiculous um, the next one, Orc Tits, is actually <laughs> referencing Michael Kirkbride uh, early early um, pictures for it. Basically, he wanted them to be kind of like uglier and sort of more like piggish. And basically, they had six um, nipples. So there was like this, I think it was a male Orc picture. And then so you see him with like six nipples down the thing. So it would be like a, the Orc women would have like, you know, six tits, like like kind of like a pig or something, you know. I think Wasn't there like a, th a thing, thing in... Vanilla Skyrim, male orcs didn't have nipples. Really? Did I invent that? I don't think you I can't invented remember. it. I mean, Elder Scrolls Skyrim orc. Let's all look at some topless orcs. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> come on, Lou. Don't look up Skyrim orc nipples. I didn't even. I didn't even need to. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I think I saw what you no, saw. No, they do. Yeah, <laughs> they do at least in this oh. picture. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, there's only one picture of a male orc. Put it that way. The rest. I mean, what did you expect? Oh, yeah. I think I saw what you saw as well. <laughs> wow. All right. Yeah. Anyway, right. I think it's referencing they de that. Yeah, they definitely <laughs> have <nips. Yeah>. Um <laughs> And other things. Good Lord. Uh, the new man. And I'm pretty sure this is just related to the Amaranth. <sighs> There's been like idea. four new man references. Yeah, I think this is the thing. Like half of these are just kind of just different words for the same concepts, but just put it different you know places in this all list. right what's the next one um Riemann rape baby so there is actually you could kind of view it like that if you wanted to in the way that when you have king kroll come to the the hill at sankator and the spirit of alicia comes to him you can kind of imagine that it is some like divine like you know what i mean king kroll was kind of like taken over by its divinity and power and then went and you know, made love into a hillock until he died. So, and then Riemann's a product of that. So perhaps there's a little bit of lack of consent going on there. Right. So the idea is that Hroll wasn't able to properly consent. Is that I, the idea? I, I guess so. I, as opposed to the hill, as yeah. opposed to the hill wasn't yeah. able to yeah. say they were keen. No, the hill, Let, let's the hill be, consent. Yeah. Let's be frank. It's a <laughs> meme for sure. But I mean, if you're trying to want to work with it, that's probably as far as you i feel get. like the amount of ways that we justify these theories we should all be lawyers i reckon we could <laughs> make anything work <laughs> if we can make this stuff work all right well we've got an exciting one coming up after the next one but the next one is reachman anarcho primitivism <laughs> so uh. for this earlier in the law too in other law descriptions of the reachman they weren't completely like Booger booger bone and skin kind of like cavemen. <laughs> and what you could go <laughs> is, you know, anarcho as in like anarchism, like, you know, something out of time, like in a historical timeline, like putting a pocket watch on a Roman soldier, for example, is an, an, an example of an anarchism in like a historical movie or something. But then primitivism. So. Wait. Sorry, what? Is, am I wrong or that could it mean anarcho? In as anarchy. In anarchy yeah. um that's what i thought when i read oh, maybe it. maybe sorry maybe, maybe maybe it is whatever either way it's still it's the same um mm. you probably either way yeah, he's, probably. he's Look, not wrong we'll go, go on with that idea because <laughs> regardless <laughs> yeah no i'm saying it could well, be it, can, it, it could, could be it could be both in the way that if it was an anarchism then um 
it's primitivism in a time where everything else is advanced. Yeah. Anyway, this is just a little nod to how that they made the Reachmen these like hyper barbaric sort of skin and bones characters instead of like what they were in previous interpretations, which they had a bit of Deja worship and stuff, but they weren't, you know, complete you know, cavemen. Did you guys play the ESO? Yeah. What is it? The the Reach DLC? The one Grey from last year. stuff. Yeah, the Grey Moor's last bit. What the hell is it called? Markarth? Gray, is it just Grey Moor? Well, yeah. Because, well, Grey Moor, the way they do it, they do the Grey Moor's, the big chapter DLC, but you know how they, like, release the smaller mm-hmm. ones and stuff. Anyway, did you, did you play through Marker. that? I haven't actually played through it. I've watched bits for it. But I've also done all of the lore books and shit in it because that's what I'm actually interested right, in. Right, right. And um, I did a video on the gods of the Reach, which is really, really... Um, it's cool. I really like the Reachman religion. It's really interesting. I just remembered something. <laughs> what? I told you about this, Drew. Um, who's the the bearded... There's like a sword singer dude. A, one of the main characters that pops up in a bunch of the, the main quests. Like, yeah, Sison. him. He lost yeah. his ability to get his spirit sword up. Right. You know what I'm saying? He's having some man issues. And then he finds out mm. that uh, some ancient uh, Yakutan dude also had this problem and he came to Skyrim. And, <laughs> oh man, it's so bad. It, who was it? Red Eagle. Red Eagle taught this dude that, like, if he just thinks about love and everything he cares about, he can get his sword back up. And it's like this weird, like really Snow, goofy, sure. like, um, Red Eagle, that brutal Reachman. Yeah, it's just yeah. like, hey, man, mm. it's all about the energy and vibes, yeah. man. And then this Yakutan who couldn't get his sword up anymore is like, oh, thanks, man. <laughs> and then he gets his sword up. Then this Red Guard in game gets his sword up too. And the whole thing, I was like, oh, this made, it made all these like cool characters and cool concepts. Just like this weird G-rated Disney film. I'm like, ugh, yuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. It, it, what? By okay. the way, I did. I, I, did, I was confused. I, I thought Saisahan <laughs> didn't ever. He was never a successful sword singer, but he tried to revive it, but failed. And then he goes into a cave and like he he what looks at some like etching etchings that Red Eagle made. And then he's like, "Oh my god, my spirit right. sword!" Whoa. And Titus Liriborn's okay, yeah. like, "Give me." I've definitely me jump seen on that. some videos with that same plot line okay. yeah. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's. I just remember. I remember it happened. And I was like, "Ugh." By the yuck. by the way. I Love found now. the definition of anarcho primitivism, if you want, also known as andrim, sure. is a political ideology that is a direct critique of the development of civilization. So basically, takes issue with shifting to agriculture from hunter gatherer, um, which has led to all these different problems. And they yeah. wanna they argue that to return to the hunter gatherer lifestyle um, would be better, I suppose right yeah kind of like tied in with paganism in some respects and returning yeah. to monkey that kind of <laughs> stuff um <laughs> but i mean yeah like actually in this instance but yeah anyway let's get on to the, the next one this is a good one you guys know all about turd helmets right oh yeah it's happened to me once <laughs> well elaborate um, for us well um i have no idea there's actually there's right, another one to Google. Is it literally like the helmets in game look like shit? What, like in Oblivion, everyone wears turd helmets? I don't know. Maybe it's just referencing the graphics. Or there's a helmet that actually looks like a shit. So, I googled yeah, turd helmet. <laughs> and I saw it. I saw it. There's an obscure band oh, called Turd God. Helmet. And their album is called Greatest <laughs> Shits. I thought it was going to be a different type gonna... of helmet with turd on it. I was like, oh, no. No, I haven't gone to images <laughs> yeah. yet. Okay, yeah. I haven't gone to images yet. Yeah, I have no idea. Even, I mean, you guys should really be typing this stuff with Elder Scrolls, like, as part of the search term. Yeah, that's a good point. Just so that's you a good know. point. Well, I think we can move on from turd helmets to dregs equals dragons. Yeah, I just don't really vibe this one. No. I think there's a few things like equals dragons here, and I'm just sort of like. Could it be like previous Cowper as well? Like, like yeah, they, but they were the dragons previous of the Cowper. Old Cowper or something like that. Yeah, I feel like anything's as in they were tyrannical. You could say they like they functioned in a similar way to the dragon. The dragons function in the current Cowper, as opposed to them actually being dragons. They just kind of filled that role of being 
tyrannical over men or something they, like they that. They exist it's in the same, in the current Kalpa, though, together. Yeah, uh, except they're, yeah, like, any if they have intelligent life, it's hidden away deep in the sea. But, yeah. Codes. The next one's a bit vague. Just coders. Right, well, that's just coders. So, like, um, coder, like, obviously, there's, like, there's Michael Kirkbride's coder, which is just his, like, ending piece to, um, to, uh, to Morrowind, essentially. It's, like, his success. Because, because a coder, I think, in music, it's, it's the ending to a, to a song, but it kind of changes something fundamental about the song. I forget the exact definition for a coder and a piece of music. It's just the, but the part for that example, brings the, the piece to the end. Together. But there, isn't there a, a change or something that happens? Um, uh, I mean, I, as far as I know, it's just, like, the part that kind of brings it to the final finish. Maybe, maybe it, maybe it is. I can't remember. I just remember there being something about a substantial, like there's a change that happens in it. So the example for Morrowind's one is that it's like you know it takes from like a, a fantasy world into what is like a sci-fi story, essentially set in the moon with the Dunmer and so on. But then still like wraps up the story entirely because people go like, oh, Coda makes it canon. When they when, when they mean by that is not that like everyone just has coders like he, he, the principal idea that coder puts forth is that elder scrolls is an inherently like interpretable sort of uh universe thing so like imagine how like shakespeare has all of his different plays and there's like you know hundreds of different versions of, of hamlet but you wouldn't necessarily some people would but the idea is that you don't go well that hamlet's not valid and that hamlet is and that's the only way hamlet is supposed to be it's very accepted that hamlet is this sort of source material that gets interpreted and transformed as long as it maintains sort of these same important themes but then it you know transforms them in interesting ways they'll put it in a modern setting or a different setting stuff like that it's so coda isn't explicitly like just like head canon it's kind of like a, a change up um well let's let's yeah. move on to alicia created dragons um i know she created the new pantheon and kind of akatosh um by forming you know multiple concepts together but well did she create akatosh it gets complicated because they'll say like you know this god spoke yeah. to this person but then well, was created later yeah. Chro chronologically it doesn't make sense because of the, yeah. like the dragon cult before and all that kind of stuff but but the other thing there about because a god like god's sort of in and it's, it's mentioned by vivek and even azura um but essentially that you can you can get the idea that god's there's a, like a god mind that they almost have. There's the one that they're living in the world. Like Vivek references, he's like, you know, in his waking life. But then there's also this god world kind of thing that kind of exists outside of time. It doesn't inherently... Um, it's not like... Well, time isn't chronological for god. So, so, for example, if it was the idea that Alicia created Akatosh, then the concept of Akatosh enters the universe irrelevant of space and time. So then when the concept of Akatosh is there... The concept of dragons and the firstborn of Akatosh Alduin and stuff can happen, but the insertion in time could be earlier or later or whatnot. Mm. It doesn't matter because the concept is just there, period. If that makes any sense at all. But it's when you have gods existing outside of time, it changes things because the past is malleable in the same way that the future or present. It's like it, like the same is. way that Talos changed Cyrodiil from jungles throughout all. Yeah, like sorry. <coughs> The same way you changed it throughout all time. You're saying at least yeah, it inserted Akatosh throughout all time. Yeah, I mean, I don't technically, I don't really oh, you know, necessarily like, if, buy if, into that if one. If this theory was to be true. Yeah, yes, yeah, same mm. idea. So the same idea that like, because now, and it's a, it's the easiest way to insert retcons, but now Cyrodiil never was jungle in, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Ever since Talos, you know, did that. So yeah, ideas and concepts transcend time. All right, I chair guess. stacking slash furniture speaks um so i remember this it was in a the, it was a sixth house base in morrowind and the there's grunt or something like that is i can't it's one of those dunmer you know the ancient dunmer strongholds the fortresses the kind of just like yeah. rectangled things um in the sewers there's a bunch of chairs that are stacked up and there's i think it's an a ash ghoul or an ash slave or whatever and you get a sleeper isn't it i thought it was it's maybe I'm it's wrong. one of the two it this... it's like he's got a gray head and then like this white middle parted hair it looks like your hair actually if it was white right <laughs> anyway if you sneak you can go up and click on him and he won't attack you it'll open a dialogue box 
and he's complaining okay. about how all the furniture's talking to him. Let's see if I can right. find it. Let me see if I can okay. find this real quick. Speak amongst yourselves. <laughs> well, we could we <laughs> no, could just quickly handle sucks. the next one, which is the Thalmor. Right, here we go. Okay. Here we go. The chairs, the tables, all confused. We hear the words and must speak them. We uh, we take them and arrange them, but still they will not be quiet. Everything is wrong. This is not straight. This is too high. This is in my way. We must put them right. That's it. And it's this guy. See this little dude? Yeah. There he is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Google things on my phone from now on because my keyboard is, like, made of landmines, apparently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the chairs, the tables, all confused. This Is is this the quote you just read? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I just found it. Um, I'm not well, sure if it's, next- if it's just that one in the sewer or if, they're, like, you can sneak up to any of them and they'll say it, but give it a crack. Not sure. Next one would Thalmor be worship Thalmor. Thalmor Old Maris, which you could kind of yeah. use as this idea that Old Maris is real in my mind. It's similar to that. Like, if Tamriel is Old Maris and it's just a memory of their past, but worship being the idea that they kind of glorify it and therefore it's real, but in their head. Right. Yeah. Like their whole ide- ideology is their built end, around yeah. an, an unachievable ideal, basically. And that ideal is Old Maris, not because it's necessarily a physical thing, but it's how they wish the elves were as opposed to a bunch of splinter factions. So I guess it kind of like it's play essentially gets played up like a god. Um next one, Dregs are elves. And the only reference I can think of to this is in the thirty six lessons of Avec when they're referred to as the ultimate of the sea. Mm. But that's about it's probably because they're annoying. <laughs> that's it. <Yeah. laughs> Um, <laughs> Alma Alexia fucked everyone except Nerevar. I love the except in italics. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, Alma Alexia, yeah, I know it, we did it with Vivek and so on, or it's heavily implied. Do you reckon and- that's a metaphor for like she screwed everyone over? Because that's more accurate. She but I mean, she definitely, everyone. but if it wasn't, it wouldn't be except Nerevar, because mm-hmm. she definitely screwed over Nerevar. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Didn't she also screw him? They were married, were they not? Uh, yeah, dude, I'm sure they yeah, did. This yeah, is the, the idea is the meme. Literally everyone, mm. except Nerevar <laughs> and Morrowind. Is, a is big it just place. like it's just like Nerevar was a cuck meme? It's like I was thinking that like, she was too busy yeah. screwing everyone else. Literally yeah. and metaphorically, had no time for Nerevar. Um, Quantum Aka spirits. This would be probably related to this concept we talked about on the Akatosh podcast about the Aka Oversoul, but I'm sure it's a thing that Kirk Bride has expanded upon. Um, Can we just get, like, I'm going to get the definition of quantum. I mean, a discrete quantity of energy proportional in magnitude to the frequency of the radiation yeah, yeah, it represents. All, right, all of the. Oh, I get it. Yeah. All of the Aka quantum spirits, Aka spirits. Like, all of the Atada. <laughs> are quantum figures that shed their skin as each aspect of them becomes more and more self-aware. Um, the Aka Tusk is a particularly old and needed version of the Time Dragon from the days of the Elnafe. Um I don't know. I don't know. Is it... I feel like there's this slapping cool word. Yeah, like, like maybe quantum. quantum doesn't need to be there and it's kind of exactly what we talked about on the Akatosh podcast. You know? Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna say yes. I wasn't there. <laughs> yes, tomorrow wind. That's another Kirk. I think it's like a magazine kind of thing, like an online magazine. Tomorrow wind today. Oh gosh, like a future. <laughs> it, it's a. It's like a fan related thing. Right. I thought it was just like saying cool that. Like from... I thought it was a joke. Because the word morrow means. Does that mean tomorrow? They used to say that in medieval times. On the morrow. Well. Yeah, on the morning, yeah. like in the morning. Yeah, because morrow just means morning, and then ah, oh, so okay. it means like uh, yeah. the morning. I've heard people refer to it as well as like any like futuristic. Like I can't remember if it is a code because it's, it's not exactly coded, but like a a future uh, morrow winter on like a like a um sci like if you would imagine, I guess a sci fi morrow wind. Like, but not. I'm on tomorrow today dot com. Oh. Yeah, like that's the, the site with all issue. the magazine. Wow, it's like all this magazine style stuff with it's with... it's coder related. Yeah. Who, how much it's time cool. does Kirkbride cool. have on his hand? I don't understand. Yeah. 
He's employed by another company. And he's by the way, he can I just, so much stuff. Th- this is unrelated, but this is circling back to what you're talking about with like the, the Red Eagle um, stuff and how yeah. he got the Shihai and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. That just gives me so much anxiety now because now I'm like, oh, now it's in the law that second era spirit swords were a thing. Now Elder Scrolls Six can kind of have like more reasonable, you know what I mean? Like idea of including it yeah, I, as like the main replacement yeah. for your thumb. I think it and was- now I'm just sort of like- the antagonist of the of the <laughs> DLC was an ancient Yukudan vampire, and yeah, he the came Rada. to the Reach yeah. looking to fix his his sword, his spirit sword issue. And then what's his name? The the red guard with the big beard finds that out yes, and like retraces so. his steps, finds the cave, and he's like, "Dude, Red Eagle was like a hippie man." And then they all get their yeah, big well, like, swords up together, and they're all like, "Dude," <laughs> and. Because that ancient vampire thing's like Al Saban or Al Sahar uh, or something like that. I can't remember he, his name. He says, "Do you want me to show you the cut that sundered Yakuda?" Except in a much more badass Does way. He? So he's like, "Yeah, that that split or sundered. It's one of those words." But it's like, oh, as so in a like of he'll hit you with were, it. All right, all right. Yeah, he's like, "I'll show you the Pancrado sword." Basically, he would, he would love that. Um, yeah. But we'll. <laughs> But tomorrow, when it's just a play on words, isn't it? it's like it's nothing it's more than that. It's a magazine, mate. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like for the for the magazine, it's not like anything actually law related, coda uh, related right. stuff. And uh, speaking yeah, of which, the second pocket guide to the empire, this was created by Kirk Bright, I think. Like mm-hmm. just a second one mm-hmm. filled with out of game law. Because in is it. The one that's actually in the game is the first one, and then there's a third well, one. He, he... Oh, hello. hello. What happened? Did I drop oh, out? Whoa. Did you drop out? No, it's all... We did uh, for oh, a second. I lost yeah, everyone for a second. Right. Me, that's hot. me too. Everyone's still recording. I'm still right? recording. Yeah, yeah, just check you're all recording. Yeah, cool. All good. All right. Okay. Group zero sum. Oh, wow. Sorry, what, what did you just what did you just say? The second pocket guide um, to the empire. Oh, I was saying I, I think there's there's two in game, right? And there's the first pocket guide to the empire and the third one. First and third. And I spent what? so long looking for the second one. Like it didn't even occur to me that it wouldn't be in a game. I'm pretty sure the first do you know the first pocket guide to the empire, I'm pretty sure, is actually one of the booklets that comes with all of the pocket guides, I think, are just booklets that came with the game. Mm-hmm. So it came with Red Guard adventures and that's and then that's when it had all of this cool stuff written um and it was sort of setting up the law for morrowind and everything and then we you know got morrowind and also it had the coolest depictions of skyrim and cyrodiil but we ever you know we didn't really get those and the third pocket guide to the empire i'm pretty sure came with oblivion collectors wait so is because eso adds an improved pocket guide but that's not the second pocket guide the second pocket guide was yeah it was it was him right canon stuff Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The second pocket yeah. guy is Mark. Yeah, Pitt. okay. I haven't. I'm not even sure. I don't think I've read that. I'm gonna have to investigate after. There are some interesting theories. Like I don't remember there. what video I was making, um, but, but I, I found something I needed in the second pocket guide to the Empire, and I was like, "Oh, I'll just jump in game yeah. and get some footage of it." I spent like <laughs> three hours searching all the games and like the files and stuff. I was like, "Where the? Where is this thing?" And then I dug deep and was like, "It doesn't exist." I'm like, "Oh my god, you bastard!" <laughs> So, what do you guys think about Numantius PhD? Numa- is it Numantius or is it Numenatus? I mean, they. What is, oh, what Numenatus, is that? sorry. Oh, yes. Yeah, Numenatus PhD. Professor is Numenatus? Numenatus is either a coder or uncoder. That's the first Google result. Should I stop Googling? That sounds ridiculous. Yeah. Let's uh let's uh red button that one and move on to Jay Garthan oh as a CSC and like what maybe his vampiric nature of how he actually took on the form of the emperor and was an imposter and all this but it's like maybe. nah it kind of becomes the equivalent of just our like you know the the, the our world's George Bush is yeah, a lizard exactly. man so is the queen a lizard man the CSC is just the swap for a lizard Look, people after, oh so it's legit you playing it <laughs> After you it's playing it down, <laughs> Scott, I think Scott from Fudge Muppets a lizard man too. We should add that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's on your agenda to uh, make it sound like some silly thing that only crazy people believe in, Scott. Only crazy. Yeah, so. I was gonna say humans don't have calves that big, man. Yeah, you're hiding something <laughs> exposed. <laughs> the right um, reaching. Uh, uh, this is I've 
the right reaching is in the 36 lessons of Avec. Yeah. So uh, this, it's part of the scripture of the wheel. It's in the fifth scripture. Look at the majesty sideways and all you see is the tower which ancestors made idols from. Look at its center and all you see is the begotten whole, second serpent, womb ready for the right reaching, exact and without enchantment. Hmm. So, so make of that hmm, what we've you got, will. Um, mm. Yeah, so it's like referring to the whole Orgdom destroyed yeah. old Maris. I mean, I, I, I don't believe it, but I guess this is the idea that the leader of the sea elves who was banished to Pyandania, um, well, I guess the leader of the sea elves, he is now, but... um. That he destroyed Isn't he all kind of like Im- immortalish? Yeah, like he, he's yeah. just been the ruler for mm. like thousands of years. Yeah, oh, could, I wonder I mean, if it's like a title a... and not a person. What, like the Gray Fox could... or something? How it's been lots of different yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, it just gets passed on. It could be, but they talk about the leader having this, and sure, they could pick it on emotional attributes, but like this, you know, this revenge and this hate and like all this, this toxic energy towards the like Ultima people. So. But there is the sim- like I can imagine the high elves being simply like, oh yeah, he was banished to Plantinia, but maybe it was some like brutal civil war or something, and then Organum did something to sunder Old Maris and actually blew up the island. If yeah, you take it as a exactly, literal place, exactly. It'd be but- weird to not have that written down anywhere. Like, what are they defending him or something? Like, I don't know. Um, yeah. maybe just like downplaying him. You know, if you can destroy a whole continent, that just adds to how like you know scary and powerful is i guess maybe but you can't get to somerset <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> giant swells uh i guess this is talking about the paint designs on the giants right oh sorry on oh the, yeah um, yeah and mm, they're stones the cows and stuff. yeah the cows and stones yeah much to yeah. say there or not really uh, is there anything there or is it just literally I mean, cows I don't know if it, but it's cool that there's a reason why they paint with swells, but I'm I'm forgetting it now. I thought it was um, kind of like acknowledgement as well of Kirkbride's writing. Yeah, well, that's the I mean, unless it's that's what I was thinking might be referenced to that Kirkbride. I think it's from the Seven Fights of the Eldu Dagger, um, or Eldu Dagger or whatever it is, that the cat yeah. painted cows are mentioned, and then that was then canonized into Skyrim with these painted cows. Yeah, well. kind of so, hit. So that was the yeah that was the idea that they the humans would that's put it. the swirls yeah. on the cow to signify it was an offering. So no, but, yeah. and that, but that, that's another example of just like why I guess like even coder and stuff exists is that there's been lots of examples of like people writing out of law things and then they get canonized or certain interpretations of fans and then in the later games they be, sort of become canonized. So there is kind of a little bit of back and forth with the fans and their theories and lore and stuff into um, the actual games. So I guess that's kind of like more so justifies it. Yeah, sky lamps. Uh that's the thing that was in supposed to be in Morrowind. It's in the concept um, art. Yeah, in concept art. I can't tell stuff, what it's, it's meant nep- to be, but there's a picture of someone holding up a massive orb that's lit up and a flying thing. I don't know if it's a cliff racer, like keeping it away. They or- were related or something, like some gaseous thing. It's basically a creature that never made it. Wait, the sky lamp is a creature. Yeah, so they're. What the hell is that? Wiki. So sky lamps are volant creatures native to Morrowind. They are often described as big gas bags with spears for feet and share a similar nature to cliff races. It's sometimes suggested they were natural predators of dragons, having run them out of Vardenfell by overwhelming their territory in numbers, despite initially being used as prey by dragons. It's also said the sky lamps ate all the dragons of the province. But this is completely like this. It says appearances. It says Morrowind mentioned only as a source here, but I'm not sure. Like this is like concept art stuff, so it didn't actually make it into the actual game. Aren't all the sources then, unofficial? Oh no, it says mentioned only in Morrowind. Yeah, I'm not sure what it actually, unless it was an offhand line. Sure. But like the rest of the stuff, like all that elaborate information there, is all from um, unofficial sources. Unofficial sources. I guess they would be related to Natchez in some way. Just being like full of gas. Oh, yeah. there, apparently there's a restoration spell called Skylamp's Shadow that's in the game. What does it do? Mm. Uh, increases your speed. Cool. <laughs> so you can run away, I guess, because you get their shadow on you and you go, oh shit. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> anyway, cool Naruto concept, but we didn't really. <laughs> we didn't really get this creature, you know, so yeah. Okay, the next thing after Skylamps is Almalexia Underking Connection. Mm. 
Mm. Sorry, what was Alma that? Alexia again. and the Under King having like some sort of connection there. Oh, I think um, she. I think oh, she oh, screwed him. Fought, <laughs> she fought alongside Wolfarth in some. Um, yeah, so that's and that's only if you, I guess, you believe Under King is Ismir Wolfarth or was yeah. at one point or whatnot. But um, yeah, and this is the Ebon Heart Pact stuff where oh, your you skull, you know, the all Skull about King this. and yeah, and Almalexia fought alongside Ismir Wolfarth, which just does not seem matched up. But whatever. But plus, Almalexia wasn't even, uh, if I recall correctly, she wasn't even really the reason Wolfarth was called. I'm fairly sure that was it was the Yorin yeah. who. Yeah, who I think with uh, the help of the Gravies, I'm not maybe? sure if it was older, like, like pre ESO lore or something. There was some other thing there. I'm not sure. I, I can't. But look, I just don't really buy into this being some. I mean, they they would have met like if if you talk about Zur and Arctus, like w- whenever the treaty was signed with the tribunal that gave them the Numidium, they would have met then. And there's always a chance that. Oh, uh, well, you know, you're something... like maybe there was some like bit of conspiring or something that maybe, um, oh, or even yeah, possibly, like literally, I'm just saying based on her, they would have connected at at that point in history if they're referring to Zurin Arctus as the Underking. But, yeah, yeah. All right, how about right. Kier uh, Joe? So typing his name, it it's, uh, seems he's. Either a white like an Aelid or no. I mean it sounds like a Khajiit, doesn't it? He's the or he's the author of the Wild Elves book. Or was Kirjo Chorver. Oh he is? I don't know. It's it's Yeah, because yeah. I'm on a I'm on a law talk section of the wiki. Mm, and, I can't find and it. And people are saying like Kirjo of where were you when the dragon broke? And then someone's saying where does the Kirjo quote come from? And then someone's saying, um, Turns out Douglas Goodall posted an early entry of Where Were You When the Dragon Broke on the forums, and the Kijit's entry was by the author Kirjo instead of whoever it is in the final version. It's funny, Kirjo sounds uh, like you know, yeah, Kijit, but um, Chorvac kind of sounds Sayesi, yeah. like Savrian Chorak. Yeah. Mm. Maybe it's a um, Sayesi that did some vampiric stuff on a Kijit. <laughs> yeah. It's like a hybrid. Yeah. These dudes are popping off every like ten things that say as he come up. Yeah. Well, how about Amaranth Anon <laughs> Anu? <laughs> Wait, Amaranth Anon or what? So I've lost where I am because I can't. Yeah, Amaranth Anon so, Anu. Amaranth Amaranth uh, is Anu, as in. I've heard before that that Anu, like the that force was the. A- previous like amaranth to become the godhead or something right like it gets a little what would that make there. well i guess maybe if you think about it like maybe like two sides of a brain i guess like a chaotic element maybe the actual consciousness is residing in so like anu. it's essentially like two godheads going at it um, but, but and anu being the amaranth but, one like the newer one but i guess more right. so like is, you know how anu is potential on like potential of things and life and so on whereas the other mm. is just sort of this like i mean do you want me to send void in the limitations do you want me to send you the quote sure okay i'm gonna send what's it from who knows <laughs> well it's not necessarily personless when you think listen, about it because well, it's kind of like Shadows on light. Amaranth, right, but yeah. anon, a new AEI, which is said to have occupied the passageways of heaven and earth because everyone above and below asks Amaranth, anon, a new AEI if they cannot find the passage. Look. Who calls to you? I think it is roughly getting at the idea. It, like that, that Anu is, is the Godhead and Padme just kind of being the limitations on... The being, I don't know. It's, yeah. It gets whack. Well, I guess they they kind of are because they're the they're the next things I'm down. Tap out on this like the. One. It is. It's just yeah. It's just Anu wanting to experience it itself. Then Padamai comes in to kind of allow it to do that. But yeah, whatever. <laughs> the way I you feel like, whatever, as, soon, like as soon as it gets <laughs> these like Godhead super astral weird theories, we're all like, oh. All right, mm-hmm. Kim by Skuma. That sounds cool. Like you just achieve or Chimba achieve. Skuma. I was going to say, I think I've seen Wilburger do that (laughs) a few times. Yeah, Um, I guess it's just transcending by taking a lot of skooma, eh? I've done that a few times, actually. But, yeah, (laughs) because I guess, like, the Khajiit do um, 
they don't condone that because they say don't oh. overdo it otherwise you'll lose your you'll Type lose it into your way YouTube. so Type kim it by skumer just kim kim and skumer is it and you'll just be watching a music video of characters from morrowind photoshopped onto power rangers and other things <laughs> with music lit <laughs> Um, the next one is actually a I've heard theory before the YR founded fourth era Thalmor and the YR is uh, the guy commenting the like the El elven guy commenting on the first pocket guide to the empire so when they're saying like things like you know that um, it's like one in ten baby ah uh, sorry only nine in ten babies are killed um, for eugenic reasons in the Somerset Isles he like kind of is responding and adding notes to this pocket guide so sort of throwing a bit of shade on it so I guess the idea is that um, the, this is why our guy founded the Thalmor which is it's outside of why our doesn't like the empires you know I, you know there's no like strong grounding for that I don't think I'm feeling pretty fried I don't know about you three <laughs> <laughs> um, that killed Tyler Vivek... Septum. Um, inadvertently, he would have. Uh, yeah. In, in the sense that, um, I don't know, giving them the Numidium kind of. I mean, I mean, unless he means like quite literally, like even in like the like. I think the idea is, I can't even remember Tyler Septum dying of old age, but um, because he outlived his own son. Because that's why Pelagius the first, mm. his grandson, gets in. So, but unless there is something like Vivek showed up and killed Tiber Septum or something. Um. Next one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or no. Yeah. Okay. Arius, A R I U S. Is this a character or something? We might have to. Arius is the supposed god of fire, who is worshipped by primitive tribal people who lived on an unspecified island in order to appease the god the people would once a year sacrifice a child to the god. If the natives failed to fulfill this tribute, Arius was believed to erupt the island <laughs> volcano, which would result in the death of hundreds of villagers. Right, and this is sourced from the Generate class page on the Elder Scrolls Arena. The first No, Not really. Of, it's like... <laughs> yeah, it's so like really old. Really, really, really old. That's an example of something that... not existing anymore. Mm. And it's saying possibly that Lake Arius that's, and Arius that's what I thought of were named after Lake Arius yeah. caverns from Oblivion, where the mythic dawn are, and they're quite the what fiery people, aren't they? Hmm. I guess the Deadlands <laughs> is full of fire too. Mm. The Parliament of Craters. What do we think? Isn't I that, feel like this is some. Isn't that Thirty Six Lessons? Yeah. There's I always keep it, it opening. those books mention like a hundred odd factions. You know, yeah, it says there Nerevar was greeted by the Parliament of Craters, who knew him by title and resented his presence, for he was to be a ruling king of Earth, and this was the lunar realm. They shifted around him in a pattern of entrapment. Mm. By, by the way, the thing um, about the vet killing Tiber Septum is in a like kind of talked about in a thing called partial interview with Vivek on the Imperial Library. So yeah, okay. so there's like some out of canon basis for the idea. Um, what do we think about Lost Twill? It's mentioned in the Remanada, isn't it? So it seems like it's a location somewhere in the kind of Colovian Highlands area. Because uh, it says, uh, mm, yeah. King Hroll set out from the lands beyond Lost Twill with a sortie of questing knights numbered 18 less 1. Of course. It's such an of easy way to make like a text <laughs> poetic, isn't it? You just get the number you want to say. And then you add and something it like to the... it and then say this less this. <laughs> so if you want to say 15, you say the 17 less two. <laughs> and it's like, whoa. There's, there's, two, there's two extra quotes from it. There's a Kirkbride one that says, Twill as twilight, grey may be Orbis. His knight's numbered 18 less one, the number of the hurling disc. But then there's a loading screen in ESO that says the official if histories of the First Empire state that when Empress Alicia's forces captured White Gold Tower, all the Aelid's evil relics of arcane power were taken and destroyed. But Duke Qual of Twill insisted until his dying day that an elf king escaped with the chief's artifacts. Right. Righto. And someone's hmm. saying it was an archaic term for Greater Colovia. Hmm. 
I don't anyway, know. we move on to thermal time control. I don't know about you, but it just reminds me of this whole idea we talked about once with the mirror logicians fighting the numidium through time um, and that kind of stuff. I mean, you could apply it to other things. Imagine using, I don't know if it would be possible to use time control to make the moons disappear or come back. But um, what do you think? Any yeah. examples? Um, not really. I don't know. I always get the vibe that the Thalmor are, are less competent than people give them credit for. Like they're competent, but then also incompetent. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't like, I don't know if they were so powerful and so good and they have all this time bending stuff. We'll just do it. Just a race. Yeah, just, just like, win. you know it's, what I mean? Yeah. But then it's kind of like, like a lot of games. Like, I mean, you look at Fallout 4, for example, we know hundred percent like the institute has the power to do all this stuff and there's constant things in the game where you just think why didn't you teleport why didn't you just do this and then teleport here and then win do you know what i mean like there's yeah. always going to be the why didn't mm -hmm. gandalf use his magic to do xyz kind of take there's i mean yeah like there's there's so many instances where the Falmore kind of like try to play themselves up as being more powerful than they actually are like taking credit for things that just coincidentally happen that a lot of it is like um you know deceptive so i feel like if they had any if there were any claims of time control it'd probably be something similar i can't think of a uh, single example of time control or possible time control by the Thalmor. Except for, well, the, yeah, the, the unless Thalmor. you're getting into, like, dragon breaks. But, like... Unless they, like, chose exactly where Aldebaran landed. Thalmor. Like, we need another distraction. Actually, I can think of an example from the Ultimate Heist quest where you use the hourglass um, in the Imperial Palace basement to open up an entrance to the Old Way, um, which allows you to get passage through the sewers and then steal ultimately steal an Elder Scroll. And that's unique. That's with the Glass of Time. And it makes you wonder how do they use that to, or how could that be used for other purposes? Is it just to open this one escape thing for Empress to use in the sewers? Or can you actually mess with time in it in a more targeted way? Like nobody knows what that mm. is and why that's there. It's next to the massively the oversized club and mm. the gigantic chair and the hourglass. There's so another, unless it's like the Thalmor got control of it when they secured the Imperial City for that brief yeah, time. Yeah, I don't know. Mm. I mean, who, yeah, who knows I where it's from, but I'm making a video on it. Or, oh, yeah. The next one is the striking or exact egg cracking, which is from Michael Kirkbride, more about the Sigic Endeavor and the Sigic Endeavor being the sort of um, like the triangle truth, the, basically the Velothi philosophy kind of thing. Is it and the it says, version uh, of the new man? Yeah, it, it says, uh, well, I don't know. This is the quote. Representations really? of the Kim and by extension the Sigic Endeavor are always protean values such as Anumidi models renowned by the Dwemer, the Scarab of Contemporary Astrolotherges <laughs> and the striking exact egg cracking of old Argonia. So yeah, Argonian related. I'm just reading a, a so, thing here where it's like, what is the exact egg cracking? And then it seems like a Michael Kirkbright answer, the hist version of the new man rather the way they would do it. Right. Any, anyway, yeah. um, I think we can move on to uh, the Wilderland or the Wilderland. Uh, which part? Is that to do with the uh, Wilder King? That's what I was thinking, but I can't. Uh, uh, is it in this King Edward book? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, the that's Wilderland. Cyrodiil is only referred to as the Wilderlands because of how violent it is, supposedly. Okay, obscure reference, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's all I see with it. Uh, that's a good one. Next. Um, Sentient Thras. So Thras <laughs> being the big, air, um, like, I guess, country or island, continent, whatever, that um, the slow to come from. Because that's, you know, been under sea. Maybe that's... Okay, and... I think because... So in the Elder Scrolls, the coral is sentient. And Thras had the coral tower, at least. And I don't know if Thras is made of coral. Oh, that's but true. But if it is... It could potentially be a sentient city. Because we're thinking it's of, made uh, of sentient corals. Those um, yeah. land coral. The sentient land for. coral. Yeah, yeah, that could be. That's it. it. That's the best I got. I think that's the best we're going to yeah. get. I, li I like it. <laughs> I like it. That's cool. <laughs> like, there's nothing... Uh, I don't know if there's much All right, to it. Sermon Zero. Sorry. Who wants to do this one? Because... Uh, um, I mean, it's that secret... secret uh, 
Douglas Goodall. Um, it it is what it is. It's I don't know. It's a cemetery. <laughs> it, is, it is what it's more, it is. It's more complicated <laughs> writing. And stuff. It's it very myself. complicated. It it's just it's more stuff explaining. Now that um, I think of it, so, sorry to interrupt origin. you, but if you were to make a video on the sermons of Vivek, like how long is that video going to be? Not even that. Really, like, what's really the big. cost? to you <laughs> that's what it it's is the time cost <laughs> you for the, for the man, not even that your your mental health you go crazy yeah, yeah here's the um the interesting takeaway i guess that breaks it down nicely on us is um there's secret messages in here um so one of the f- secret messages is the ghost of a god is no man and vivek committed no crime and then another one to the dwemer and oblivion belong belong this treasure and they are dead so and then there is also white gold Nech merchants, Cherim Muzariah, hold the key on 1200 in the lightning struck dragon tower. Oh my God. I bind to these Daedra guardians under the seed apple lattice. <laughs> so it makes sense of what... <laughs> Dude, for the first 20 words, I thought you were reading the next one. I was like, oh my God, what the hell is that? Uh, it's just one big... Yeah, no. Okay, okay. Let's, uh, let's move on from that one. Um, where are we at? Ebony listening frame. Ah, uh, so this is a 36 lessons thing again, I think. Or it might be another Kirkbride thing, but I've okay, heard uh, basically the explanation that it's an allegory for, like, vagina. Um, it's how he killed one of the... Actually, it might even be yeah, the yeah, demon yeah. I, chieftains. I got some, something for yeah. you. Yeah, it's, it, it's the Izmir. ebony listening frame refers to the female sex organs when used as a weapon against Izmir by smothering his head. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that happens in I'm the... I'm fine. I, in the... What's it call it? I don't, oh my god, I'm I stronger than There are two instances of this happening. The first is when Vivek uses his Muatra as the ebony listening frame against Izmir in Sermon 9. And the second is when Cyrus uses his enchanted helmet against Talos in the sword meeting. Again, this is all very... Uh, just feels very out of law. Um, or like very interpreted. I mean... It's yeah. based on something but there is that's a co- in law, but then there's interpretations that come from outside because of it. Because it's a relation to Vivek too, as like remember Vivek being a hermaphrodite yeah. possessing both, and you know the ebony listening frame or Moatra being like the yeah. the penis, the spear. Oh, he said a naughty word. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's go. Hist. Um, Hist. Hist. Chilean wars. So I'm assuming that's referencing the Jill, as that's, in those um, the f- out of female canon. invisible dragons that fix time wounds that are warring with the Hist in the ninth era. There you yeah. go. What is that text actually from? Is it just called Kinmune? Probably. Okay. Yeah, one of them. Oh boys, <laughs> I found it. I found it. The Lost Twill. Yeah, wait, there it is. The Lost Twill is written <laughs> twice. Yeah. Is well, that like it was lost? Is it's that found. like on purpose? There is there a secret message to that? Like. It means there's two meanings of the lost twill. It means it was lost, and there it is. It's right there. Well, okay. well, well. We have Cold Harbor slash Clockwork Tamriel, and I guess the one thing that the one like first thing that stands out to me is as like the Clockwork City was designed to be a replacement for like Nern, right? Like he's kind of like. Sothisil's perfected Nern, and then you've kind of got Cold Harbor that's also like, well, at the very least, is replicating Tamriel as in some sort of like you know, it's a destroyed kind of version so unless there is some kind of connection there and maybe why are these metaphysical beings all trying to replicate tamriel slash nern i don't know mm. but i don't know what th- there is to that outside of that the crimson i feel like ship. that's yeah we're, we're hopping oh, straight sound... to the next one just is this okay uh the drag... last living kothringi no. trying to escape the flu on a oh, ship yeah. dubbed the Crimson Ship. Oh yeah, okay. And it never returned, right? Nobody ever knows where that ship went. It just kind of sailed off, and that's the end of yeah. all traces of it. I'm just trying to mm. find the the exact source of that. Oh yeah, hold on. The Cothringi and the Cothringi and the Crimson Ship. Um. Yeah. There's some pocket guide uh, stuff here, but also in the Kahatan but I think flu. Kahatan flu? Is that how you say it? I There's, guess uh, everyone. Nahatan flu. I, I don't. 
Well, that's what I say, but I don't know. Um, the uh, yeah, so I, I guess it's just the idea that maybe it's out there. So somewhere. it left the shores of <laughs> like, Black Marsh what happened? in the second era, five sixty three, only to be turned back at every point. And then after a year, they reached Hammerfell, um, and with no one to shelter them, they sailed west to the Abyssinian Sea. Um, the book. Pirates of the Abyssinian tells a tale of the discovery of the ship found adrift by a group of pirates. Oh, its entire crew dead. The tale appears to be fictional, though, as no official records exist that confirm the discovery of the ship. So I guess it's like, did they find it all dead or did it just keep going and where did they go? A Khajiit beggar claimed to have been on the ship that encountered the vessel during his service in the Imperial Army, blaming the event for his misfortunes. However, the reliability of his testimony is questionable. And the people of Hammerfell have, uh, they, memor- they memorialize it as the um, day of shame. Nobody leaves their house, for it is told the Crimson Ship will return on this day. Okay. Elder Scrolls Six Quest, that's what that is. Yeah. It's coming. It is. Storming of the Citadel. I, I don't know why, and I don't think it is this. Is I that, feel like a lot blades? of Citadel. It's a lot of Citadel. Yeah. Sorry, not Blades. Legends, Elder Scrolls, the card game. What about it? Is that what it's referring uh, to? The uh, when they reclaim the um, Imperial see, City, for, and it's for some not reason. I thought it would actually be the um, when Mora House and like the early the first time they like it is referred to the Citadel. I think they do refer it to mm-hmm. as. Do they call White Gold the Citadel at one point? The I can't Citadel remember, must but, fall is a quest in the Elder Scrolls Online. Um, the, the Citadel. I, I I know that... I, f- I feel this like they only refer Harbor, to the... Though. the um, they only refer to the Tower of White Gold, I think. Uh, let's see. But yeah, it could it could be that. Yeah. Because I guess that that's... It's just one of the instances of it's, storming. It's one of those things where it's just vague yeah. enough to be like, there's a lot of storming of a lot of Citadels. Yeah, like the like, Citadels of the Sixth House is another thing, like... You know, Citadel is a word used around the place. And then came the storming of white gold. So it does actually re- call storming, it the storming as yeah. well. So it's probably hmm. referring to um, to Pelinor going ahead and, and his fight with Umril. What about Altmeri Form Wars? Is this like really old, like, a- like Dawn stuff? Form Like wars. constant. Is that in the Great War? Is it where what? I don't know. I guess it's oh, just man, the, I don't know. the the fact it's plural. Form wars. I can't even see it on the damn thing. Where the oh, there it is. Anyone got anything? No. Nope. All right. Nope. Go. Next one. Yegrim Bagan made Numidium. Well, I guess so. He won't translate the plans about it, and seems what to know about it he he explicitly said he wasn't a part of that Does project he? but yeah he, he he says i'll i'll bring it up but may he i mean he could be lying about that maybe he didn't want to be interrogated associated be... with it after it what happened. was his rank yeah. though was he the was kagran active chief tonal architect or was yagram Bagan? he was a yeah no yagram was a master craftsman who served kagran Ak, who was Kagrenak, the chief tonal architect yeah but he says that he wasn't part of the team who worked on uh the numidium oh he so was he's shifting blame so yeah oh, he nah. very well could be but then again he's no one's going to hold him accountable anyway can you imagine if the person who made so, this iceberg meme is just watching this laughing their head off at us because half of the stuff they wrote is not even real how about that <laughs> probably the uh sons of what's sons next? of horror so that's referenced, I think, in another Kirkbride thing, of course, in Nuhata of the Sphinx Moth Inquiry Tree. Um, Tiber Septum says a line, the storm crown mant- uh I can't even see it says mantled or mantled. I don't know. By the way of the fourth, the steps of the dead, mantling and incarnation are separate roads. Do not mm. mistake this. The latter is built from the cobbles of drawn bone destiny. The former walk like them until they must walk like you. This is the death of... This is the death children bring as the sons of horror. Dunno. Sick. Love it. <laughs> this is just all like doing dead. Like, I feel so fried every time I read it. I'm just like, I don't want to like... 
Let's just keep going. What is this? Although we're making good progress. K K K I can't read that. Right? That's how I read I it. I guess so. I don't know. I can't read. Kaleidoc it's like Hercules. Kaleidocules. And a kaleidoscope. Oh, no. Fused. If it was like a Greek dude, I would imagine Kaleidocles. Kaleidocles. Uh, does anyone look? Yeah, I don't know what that is. Um, okay, I can see a thing to a cut ride post somewhere. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Here's the sentence. In brackets, first shape out of brackets was untranslatable, which was good to us, but difficult, which was also good to us. Best descriptions came from the edges. Kaleidocles dancing Miria Tadada to the song of Neil. Okay. <laughs> Righto. Um, the next one, though, we're kind of somewhat familiar with is the Aelids bird people, which yeah. is the idea that the Aelids weren't elves, but they actually were the bird people, right? That they. I mean, there's mm -hmm. a lot of they, theories about yeah. the bird people, but I think that's what this one would be referring to, or that they at least took on a whole bunch Into of their. Bread. Yeah, or took on a whole bunch of their, like, motifs and stuff and yeah. we see all oh the, the yeah you and, see a lot of birds yeah in their artwork and stuff yeah but uh, i don't know i don't I, really vibe it that much in elder scrolls online in, i think in cold harbor you meet the last king of the aliens who mm. looks like an elf yeah. and he's not a bird person so yeah i'd imagine they literally weren't bird people i mean you meet aliens in elder scrolls for oblivion yeah. as well in that same ultimate heist quest i was talking about where you go back in time the statues yeah there's two statues after you use the arrow of extrication to open one of the doors oh yeah yeah it's like an arrow with a literal aren't they just statues the though they're statues but they come to life and they're called like a lid something and they these statues very tall elven figures in elven armor so yeah i made a video about the 10 like uh hardest to find unique items in oblivion and both of those statues have a weapon that drops each I think one's a mace, one's a sword. But to get, you have to do all this crazy stuff to get it. Because if you pick it up, it disintegrates in your inventory. And there's these, like, it takes like 20 minutes to do this method to get the two weapons. I bet, and they're, they're, the I two, bet they're not two even the hardest great. to get weapons in the game. No, they're terrible. Like, they'll probably be like elven or just replica or something. They're, yeah, they are. They're elven. Yeah. But they have a different name, so they're unique. Yeah, they're called Aelid Garden, uh, Guardians, but they were really big. Like, they're taller than you. They're, like, kind of set scale or. You I know, thought they were just like magic statues. Uh, I mean, they're shaped like. Who knows, eh? Look, I feel like look. It, I feel like it would have been more explicit in Songs of Pelennor and early yeah. tellings if they were like literally yeah. bird people. You know, Do you know oh, what I mean? for sure. Like, you know, if um, you know the statue you get in Oblivion in Bruma, that like for being yeah. the champion and everything, and they build a statue of you and whatever you were wearing at the time. So if you were wearing. <laughs> no clothes but a helmet with a staff that's what it'll be you can actually use console commands to select it and press kill and it will like fall down like a body just oh, covered in yeah, statue texture that. and then you can use the <laughs> staff of worms to reanimate it and it comes back and it's super big except it's no longer a statue and um it speaks as well and was like Jesus say Christ. say lines to you and be this gigantic standing person that's pretty cool yeah all right, well, let's do uh, dragon tusks. And the only thing I can think of by association is, you know, they refer to it as the Acker tusk, mm. which is like, the big oversoul, like Acker being the oversoul of all of the different time gods, like Alduin, Akatosh, yeah. Oriel. But so maybe dragons have tusks. Although they do in, doesn't uh, the ones in Elsewhere and stuff have, like they kind of have like mm. the tusky look. I don't things. know who like the, the, the big dick dragon is. The big, Grunted, the big green dude he's got like six big tusk he's got like they look like horns but then they come out of the side of his head and from yeah. under his chin too i'm pretty sure its name's cal grunted I, I think or something but that like guy's that. Uh, his design is sick yeah well i guess there you go some dragons do have tusks mystery solved yeah. all right um Ooh. the next one is egg of time again Lorcan's heart the egg of time well but the uh, the egg of time like, is in italics, right? Separate. So that means it's the, the egg book. of time is the book, which is kind of like this Da Vinci looking Lock thing us. with the tools and the heart. Um, I don't know what that means. Lokan's heart, the egg of time. What about it? 
Well, I mean, Lorcan's heart's in it. <laughs> yeah. In the, like, the book. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Um, maybe it's, it's just Unless plans, it's trying to basically. say, like, they're saying that Lorcan's heart is the egg of time. Like, that's what it's actually referring to. Guys, I just like, can't just... help but move on to the next one. Because we yeah. have All right. the best one on the list, which I've just lost because this list is so crazy, but I think I can well. say off by heart, Khajiit Lactate Genetic Memory. What, so I do, mean, they, do they maybe? lactate water? Because water is memory, as we talked about. Well, is there I mean, some? Every... Is there a text where like uh, the Khajiit breastfeed memories to their babies or something? <laughs> like <laughs> I off the top of my head, I don't know. <laughs> Hang on. Like I, but I guess. But wouldn't that apply to everything if they're trying to make the argument that you know, like water is memory, and, well, and then. But, if, you know, you but drink water you and drink you're made up of water. water and... Then you get memories like that. Doesn't yeah. really make sense. I feel like it's too specific to not have some like uh, reason that it's. Mm. There. Although, then again, they can just, you know, just write whatever they want, and we'll like uh -oh. research it and expect it's got to be real. Um, I can't find anything about milk. <laughs> Something about Khajiit are body snatchers from the past. Yeah, that's all I'm finding. Uh, uh, damn. I was hoping for some funny book from Daggerfall or something, but... Well, that's a yikes for me, guys. Let's <laughs> move on. <laughs> um, the Prisoner. So I guess that is should be pretty simple. That's the reference to um, your character in all of the... Okay, well, it's actually since Morin, were you a prisoner in Daggerfall? Because you were sent as an agent, but I don't know if you were... I can't remember if you're disguised as a prisoner or something. I don't remember. In the arena, in the arena, you're trapped in a dungeon, so I guess you're an, a prisoner of a kind. But regardless, I guess the, the metaphysical idea is that, you know, the prisoner is you playing the game, like in the Elder Scrolls series. Like, you always start off as, like, someone who's been jailed or whatnot. So, like, sort of someone with a great amount of agency. I don't know if there's a larger meta idea in lore, but... It's just a convenient way to get the player where they need to be, really, isn't yeah. it? The prisoner. Mm. The <laughs> blank slate. How about the eight how about the eighty second Crodo? <laughs> I have zero. I think we all know that one. We don't even need to Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, that nobody course, hasn't heard of that. Crodo, please. Um see Red Guard Forum even. Madness. <laughs> um <sighs> Please note that I personally haven't a clue as to the discussion that took place here. In reading the following, you may notice a few passages written by 82 Crodo. Oh, is this like a, a member of... Like a forum thing. Andel Crodo is... Uh, I don't know. It's a bit... Uh, oh, 82 Crodo. Yeah, it seems to be a f forum. Thing. 82 Crota of Office of Provincial Studies, Eleanor. Wait, this has got a thing where they're saying My Michael Kirkbride is in this or something, and he was saying how to pronounce things, and it's saying like Dwemer is like Dwayne. Oh, I've already seen it's, that. Don't get me started. Yeah, Dun Dunmer is Dunmer and Kaimer. So, Camel, what's Kymer. your take on the Dwemer? Is it the Dwemer or the Dwemer? Oh. Where do you stand? I think well, this, I don't ever remember anyone saying it in Elder Scrolls Online, but I think they say Dwemer. Right. Because yeah. what happened was the like because the older games didn't have much voice acting. In Morrowind, Azira does his speech when you kill Dagothur, and she says like the failed folly of the Dwemer. Right, and that's where you. And got it then from. in Skyrim, when you talk to Falion, the guy in uh, Morthal, right? He says oh, that he's yeah. met he's met the. He says he's met them, and he's, he calls them the Dwemer. So, I'm like, the two characters that say their name and who have actually met them both say Dwemer. Here's a conspiracy. What? It's someone with one of those speech impediments actually saying the Dreamer. And oh, the dude, that's Dwemers. pretty good. I don't mind that. <laughs> I tell you what, it's actually more... Con it can, you know, makes it more realistic in the way, like, you know, tomato, tomato, like, people do yeah. pronounce things differently mm, yeah. in the world. But I don't think I've ever heard Dwemer... No, that's just the thing he was, he was saying. <laughs> um, oh, and, and on that same list, I can remember, I think Bosma, the S is silent. It was like Boma or something. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
Um, City of Rock Creek. That's from... It's from a book in Daggerfall, I'm pretty sure. I was reading that recently. Yeah, I think it was a location in Arena um, 2. When I was... I made a video recently, 10 Rare Elder Scrolls Creatures, and this book's got a wombat in it. <laughs> it's an it's a Imperial town in Black Marsh that gets cursed, and a, like a, a plague comes, and a witch curses the town, and all the businesses leave, and the Lord's like, Oh no, my town! And his daughter has a magical wombat. And he's like, Mr. Wombat, please, I just want um, I just want one business to stay in my town and never leave. And the Wombat's like, well, you've always been a shithead to me, so... <laughs> and he's, he's, he builds this uh, business at like in, like, the gate of the town. And then everyone gets stuck inside the fortress and they can't leave. Because his business is in the way for eternity. Um, and I think they all eat each other. And the irony being the Wombat is, like, the first thing to go. <laughs> because <laughs> they all get trapped in this this hmm. thing. I think the wombat... There's a, the god of animals in Daggerfold called Eus, or Ius, and the wombat was, like, his right-hand man. Look, I'm, I think it's good that they retcon some things out of existence, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, who would have lived there? Like, it sounds wombat, like an unusual it's silly as putting a description for... Scrolls. It's just... Nah. Let me just... Would this have been an Argonian town? It, I think it was an, an, like, an, imp- an imperial... living there? Town in, you know, when the Imperial Imperials built heaps of cities and towns in uh, Black Black uh, Black Marsh. Jesus. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so this is at the time of yeah. Yeah. So this is Daggerfall. Rock Creek, also known as Rock Park. <laughs> Rock Park, mm. where the wombats live. Yeah. I mean, if you look <laughs> it, it up, it sounds like a up, wildlife park. It, yeah. It seems court. like Rock Park's the preferred name. The the uh, the thing that's confusing me is uh, it says at some point prior to. Did I explain okay, that correctly? Never mind, I've totally mixed up my dates. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Why are we still talking about But yeah, it's a weird place. All right, we can move to Atmora Old Maris Inversion. Um, I don't know if it's... Hmm. Unless it's kind of... I don't know, just it's the, like, inverted... They're both, like, the, the, uh, the frontiers of human versus elves... And the middle ground is Tamriel, is the it, arena. Would inversion be like them? I don't know. But what's the inversion? Some weird thing. Oh, okay. So maybe this is referring to the idea of Alt Mora. The idea that At Mora was an elven place and not a human place. Right? Uh, perhaps. Alt Mora. Uh, yeah. I don't, <laughs> I don't know that theory. I'm getting so <laughs> fried at this time. I'm so like. Yeah, I think what you were talking there. about, Drew, is kind of like the area that it is about. Yeah, but um, yeah, I'm surprised our brains are working at uh, all. At this oh, point. That's right. There's a thousand and eight um, weapons of rapture. Uh, well, let's talk about two hundred <laughs> each. <laughs> you, you ought to. I don't know. I guess who wrote it. I'm, I'm gonna. Cyrodiil- if there's a thirty-six guess. lessons of rapture. Yeah, guess who wrote Kirk about Bright. it? More Kirk um, Bright. So the requisite, uh, the requisite uh, Ada Chimelic holding tendrils activated, preventing Imperial collapse. Imposthumously uh, or whatever. The, uh, the Amulet of Kings granted to the Cancun Council that the Spore Dream at Arda 8 Adra eat the Dreamer. He immediately stored in the 1008 Cyrodiilic Weapons of Rapture. You know, whatever that means. It's transcribed from a spore dream of an unidentified evaporating moth priest that reached zero sum. So, okay, have yeah. some that of that. Makes perfect that sense. <laughs> How about Thalmor UFOs, boys? Uh, Google has <laughs> nothing for that. Thalmor UFOs, yes, of course. Um, okay. Um, we're at, that, that's just a meme. For maybe sure. anyone that so, levitates t- is a UFO because it's banned. They're like, what could that be? Well, yeah, if it's unidentified. Flying Thalma, I don't know. Um, uh, Tiber and Harold die at 108. And I'm pretty sure that's just a coincidence between Tiber Septim and King Harold dying on the same Dying year. at 108. I mean, you could double oh, check. at 108, I, mean, I don't even want to double check, but <laughs> oh, I'll do it anyway. Yeah, what? They died in the same, like, at the same age, so they must be the same person. They're connected. Um, Wait, but it says died, oh, at 108. At, yeah. So it's like mm. saying they're the same. It's like saying I've never seen <laughs> Drew and Batman in the same room before. Like, <laughs> I have. Yes. So he died, you know, this is way early. This is like first era stuff. But yeah, he died at 108 and so did Tiber Septum. So. 
I mean, you know, it kind of goes back to the other point about Tiber Septim being killed by Vivek, but the idea that Tiber Septim just chilled in his in his later years and just died of old age seems like I don't you know, I'm not getting conspiratorial and saying it's a cover up, but I feel like there's got to be something else going on. Like I don't know, I feel like after the whole um Numidium thing and coincidentally the other two getting sucked into the Mantella or however that worked and him just being totally fine and walking away from it and not being affected in any way and then just dying of old age it, it all seems a bit boring considering his life before that yeah so I don't even know if he died at 108 oh here we go the Adamantia scroll rocket yeah I have no clue I couldn't find anything about it uh <laughs> Why is that? It does sound because you're insane. It kind of reminded me of the scroll of a Domfa, like some random thing that has some obscure source, and that's it. Is it like the Adamantia Tower? Is a a rocket? Yeah, it's it must have some powered by Elder Scrolls. Yeah, I, I mean no that's idea. all I can think of. <laughs> what and then the uh, Magna Gi when they fled, they flew in a yeah, rocket. Well, you need or rocket, like you need something pointy to pierce the mm. the veil and create, you know, star shaped holes. I don't know. Should we? Yeah, did, I don't know. I've heard that round topped <laughs> rockets are, are better, right? No, so like pointy. That's just like a yeah, dictator yeah. thing. Um, you know, it doesn't need to be pointy. It just looks. I think we should rocket onto the next one. Too many movies, <laughs> Drew. The, the, uh, Gartoki. the Gartoki. Gartoki. Because Gartok, I'm pretty sure, means hand. The weapon. In Dario, no, oh, Altadun's the, hand, okay. the weapon. Altadun's Gartok's weapon. hand. So is this saying the handy? <laughs> is this just a. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> or is it some like out of Break faction? it down again. <laughs> So Gartok means hand in Daedric and it's referenced plenty of times in 36 lessons and it just says the Gartoki and I'm like, is this guard like like handy? Oh, usually <laughs> E handy. on the end of something and I know this is very like our world is plural. The hands. Yeah, like it could be yeah. the hands. Yeah. Um, Thalmor and Jigalak. Did we do, do this already? One. that. I feel this one definitely came. Yeah, up. was it? But did it? Was it phrased differently? Like yeah, they it's like worship Jigalag or something. But the Thalmor yeah. allied with him, and that's why they rose to prominence. Basically, I, I feel Unless like it was like Ultima and Jigalag. I don't know. Who cares? Yeah, yeah. Because they um, were important. Um, not quite as important as they are now, but they were. They were important in the past as well. Before Jigalag became his own free oh, entity. Gar- so I, I don't really see. Sorry, any Gartok relevance. was. Um, mentioned in the 36 sermons um mm-hmm. yeah. yeah so i'm just looking the hand of padamai yeah. and the hands or the yeah right his weapon looking at it like now that. um anyway let's get back on track and do moth eaters mm. is that people trying to level up their alchemy in skyrim could be oh man i love that uh the one effect that's it it's my best. <laughs> I used I'm to sure do that like all some... the time. I would just eat everything to get effects. Yeah, I think you meant it like as, when you were a kid. Ah, oh, I used to eat moths. <laughs> I used to love them. Yeah. Um, Moth eaters. Clexographic okay, League. That's... I just literally have no idea. What does clexographic mean? Yeah, that... I think I was trying to say that last hmm. episode when we were trying to explain what League was. And it was that word, and I kept saying uh, kaleidoscopic, and I was like, I know that's not it. I don't know what it is. Oh, sorry. I know what it is. Okay, so... It... is that inkblot image thing. Oh, okay, is that right. Like a Rorschach image? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. that's what we said. Yeah, it's the... the Kirkbride's idea was that, li- like, a good way to imagine League is, like, the... the if you fold over wet a piece of paper with wet ink on it, the... Um, you know, the print that's yeah. left on the other side, that's kind of what an adjacent place is. I'd never heard the term flexography. No. I wonder if, before. like, getting we're achieving raw shark tests, like you know, how we're going to some pretty deep lore right now. You know how we, um, what? I wonder if, like, achieving Kim or zero sum, right? If it actually feels like you're melting, because like I feel like I'm <laughs> melting going through this All list. Right. <laughs> like, does this like just melt into a pile of ash? <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's right. We've, we're nearly at the bottom of Fargoth yeah, we, uh, we, we're, as Vivek. So we're on the final run. We can do this. 
the whole I thing? Reckon. No, 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 yeah, like, no way! Are you kidding? What do you mean? I Absolutely we yes. Oh, <laughs> no, nah, man, we're only hour and a half. We can oh, do this. No. We, we we've still got another twenty <laughs> topics to go. Yeah, okay, so let's let's take it even easy. But look that. at the speed. Um, Har note equals Mary and Zagon. So Har note he is in thirty six lessons of Vec. I think pretty sure it's. I'll pull it up. Again. Isn't that no? no. Um, oh no, it's Har. S- here is how City Face hid from his mother father. It had been more born named as Harnote, a bare urge of power, an esoteric wind nerve tuned to the frequency of huddled masses. So unless it that's some like Vivex vague poetic reference. Muatra. Hold on. City Face was the sixth monster to escape of Vex Muatra and was originally named Harnote. Or is it Harnote? Mm. I don't know. But yeah. Anyway, so I guess the idea is that this is Marin's Dagon. Um theory kind of kind of sound like this a bare um, urge mm. of power an esoteric wind nerve tuned to the frequency of huddled masses if that's like kind of like revolution like you know how it's like the masses usually instigate revolution not like the top of society maybe that's me looking too much into it or something but anyway that is we've got the another gist of that one Duché theory here another uh yes. Arctis is versa Duché. <laughs> So I guess unless Versa Duche survived and it wasn't him that was killed and he took on the skin of Xeranarctus oh, and then I don't think so. It was Versa Douche bag. That's what it is. That sounds like a meme. <laughs> King's cough. The king has a cough. That's sick. Uh-huh. Yeah. I don't know. I think like King of Skyrim shouting at King, uh, oh, maybe uh, unless it's like some reference, like you know, King Wolfarth, like he had to uh, rule with a, like he could only write down his um, laws and it's, stuff it's because if he said them, a lessons of Avec. It is. Um, I thought that was his excuse for not talking. So like, oh, no, the king's got a cough. The he king's cough and the hyperlink to it, um, which is just a hyperlink, but it leads you to the thorn. Thorn. Yeah. yeah. All right, kind of similar page. Uh, the catalyst. Let's check the 36 lessons of Vec and see if it's here. Hang on, no. wait a sec. So, wait, wait I was right about what? shouting with the king's cough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God damn. There you go. Oh, man. That sound of you opening a drink has me so jealous right now. Why I really you get want, a drink? I really want to. I can't. I've been locked in for the final run. This is Mass Effect. Bro, I have so mission. many drinks around me. <laughs> the catalyst. So, oh, sorry. We just did we that. Did it, uh, what is it? Well, it didn't. It's, well, it's, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, the catalyst is such a vague thing. I don't know. It's the catalyst event. Maybe it's the Oblivion Crisis, which is the catalyst for all the yeah, events of the fourth era. Or maybe it was, was or maybe it's like the hmm. defining point at the end of the big battle at the end of the world that is also nah, the start of the world, which is the Dawn era things. catalyst. It's the ingredient you. you put with two others that finally makes them all link together and you can make a potion. I mean, here's a post on Tez Law. Could the catalyst, hero slash prisoner, and posse point all be the same thing? <laughs> or am I going insane? That's, that's, that. There's a thought. Right. Yes. How about, about no. Yeah. How about say essence? As in like, I, I don't know, is that just a play on like say in transcendence and how like a say is transcending? Empiricism. Yeah. yeah. The hero of Kavach okay. is Pelinor White Strike. What do you think about that? Well, there's people that talk about him mantling... Pelinol, like when he you when you fight Umaril as a leader. I was Nights thinking that. Don't you like become an avatar of him? Yeah, somewhat. I, I guess I, I played that's... that once when it was current, and I don't really remember it well. Or unless the theory is trying to say that Pelinol White Strike time traveled again and it literally was the prisoner that became the hero of Kavach and did all that mm. stuff, and then Amiel Arctus. Who's this? Um. Let's have a look. Zirin's hot daughter. It's not related to uh, Emil Richten. There must be a... Yeah, I mean, uh, I can't see any reason why... I think be. that's literally all I can see it's when I've typed what it screen in. screen name at the time. Oh, so mm-hmm. Emil Arctus you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. All I got was a librarian comment on an Imperial Library post called How Beautiful You Are that you do not join us. And it says, as an added curiosity, his screen name at the time was Amiel Arctus. Okay. All right. Space gods. Space gods. 
I mean, they're all space gods. Um, You're right. In a way. <laughs> well done. I guess it might be similar to the sea gods, how there's no explicit, like, I guess I'm a god of space. But I guess then again, the void is you know, Sith and Oblivion. And if the gods are like the planets and whatnot, if you look at it like from a cosmology perspective, then everything is, a, they're all space gods. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Okie dokie. <laughs> yeah. it's kind of insane. Uriel the fifth. Uriel the fifth. So um, the boy dude. who goes to Akavir. Is that the guy that went to Akavir so, and never came back? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. He did a Harold so Holt. So that's <laughs> for anyone that's who doesn't such know. An obscure reference for our audience. <laughs> there was an Australian prime minister who just what he just went for it. He swam out into the ocean. He and went he for a swim back. and yeah. vanished. Yeah. He, yeah, he found that's Akavir. a true that's story a from this fictional realm of Australia. An Australian politics meme. Cook that's right. Cook I referenced that Street the Sharks the last week. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Michael, you're an expert on this next one. Other kin. Um, oh, of other course, kin. the other kin. Um, obviously, it's a coda thing. Um, Akavir says to the other kin, "Get out." <laughs> that's what I found. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were going to go somewhere completely different. I wish different because when you click the but, source um, material, it leads you to a post that's been deleted. And I'm like, hmm. okay. That's like me trying to fix my Skyrim mods. They're like, oh, here's a link to this mod that fixes it. And you click it, it's go, this mod's been deleted. Okay. Must include other kin. Okay. Compilation of all law regarding Akavi. Um. Not all other kin are furries, what? and most furries are not other kin. Oh, wait, that's, that's okay. not Elder Scrolls. Akavir says to the other <laughs> kin, get out, primary source. This True. source is considered non canon since it was never published in game. Other kin seems to be a name given to those who are not Kapotan, but may also allude to humans who take on cultural aspects of animals, like barbarian in Greek. Um, Toshraka demands that the other kin sail to Tamriel and perhaps even further west to Yakuta and take their own religions with them because they sully the name of the dragons. It's just out of out of canon stuff. Okay, how about then we go to Vec ships, which are basically just spaceships. I'm pretty sure they were just used in the Landfall story for the Dunmer, I think. Um, how they got to the moon, basically. Um, Falma equals hermified humans. What is hermified? I have no idea and can't find. Unless it's like Herma under Mora. Under the influence of, yeah, under the influence of Hermaeus Mora okay. in some way. Look, I, I reckon that's just a not uh, a good theory. I thought I found a good link that would explain it and I click it and it just took me to someone posting the iceberg meme on a random forum somewhere in, in the <laughs> middle of nowhere. All right. Uh, next, invisible dragons. The only thing I can think of, is like and that's only something I vaguely remember. The gills too. Yeah, I, yeah, I only vaguely remember them being invisible. But yeah, the gills, I guess. <laughs> so, um, oh, suicide. I, I, I think it might be to do with how like all the dragons vanished, and yeah. then when Alduin comes back, they're like, oh, there's actually all these dragons that never went away. But it's he's... like, oh, they're just invisible the whole time. Don't worry about. It. Um. So, suicide trolls is there is actually a troll in Oblivion mm -hmm. that has committed suicide under a bridge because he fails at making a bridge toll. So, he got drunk and drowned himself. So, that's a suicide troll. Um, the Vivek Extreme Daddy Issues. Um, well, because he was the son of a Netchman's... A wife. Netchman and a Netchman's wife. And I guess, yeah, Daddy Issues. And that's turned him into a... Well, yeah, Same I mean, guy. he went after Mo like Baal, didn't he? So, <laughs> yeah. Which, you know, if you're the first ultimate here, daddy, you got, you got something going on. What do we think? Not bird aelids, but what about alien aelids? Mm. Or aelids or whatever they. They look kind of alien, but. They so like some stars. people. I, I mean, they did build some pretty crazy, <laughs> impressive things, right? Yeah, but so did the Dwemer, and I wouldn't call them aliens. I think the alien... Alien is only relative anyway. Like, you know, what an alien is. To yeah, I was going to say, what does that mean? Okay, There's like so multi-dimensions and creatures coming through all the time and gods sucking through space and time. What would do, what would be an alien within the Elder Scrolls? Yeah, true. What does that like, even like mean? Like a Daedra is pretty much an alien, isn't it? Like something yeah, exactly. from another 
bro. Or like the Yakudans coming from a previous Kitapa. Like a, a, a uni- yeah, like a separate universe thing. That's pretty alien. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Though there is more to them, because the next one, Insect God, is actually something that's legit. So there was this tribe called the Men of Gi in the in the Adabala. There is it says they were who were eventually destroyed by the flower king Nilakai, who made a great sacrifice to an insect god named and in parentheses lost, because you just don't know the name of the god. But that's an Aelid king called Flower King Nilakai, who sacrificed this whole tribe of men to some insect god. Um, in the video on Aelid kings, I did I I uh, I, po- I basically hypothesized it could be a bunch of different kind of. Uh, Daedric princes, like in a different form or something, or Perry it could be I. an entirely new god. Yeah, I think I even said like I, I had a few guesses at it, but um, but uh, what what, what yeah. was the source of that insect god thing? Um, the Is it um, from Daggerfall? Adabal. No, it's from Oblivion. No, That's the nine. Okay. Um, the Adabal R, and it's um, yeah, okay, it's by Mora House apparently, written by him. So there's the insect god. Uh, next, RK equals Anand the Fox equals Zurin Arctus. Anand the Fox, I'm pretty sure, is another name for Pelena went by in his earlier years or something. Was it not? Or is that Hans the Fox? No, Anand the Fox equated with... Hold on. Um, Izmir with Pelennor, Arnon the Fox equated with Zurin Arctus was listed beside Izmir and Pelennor in the discussion on the Dragon Break. Um, Wolfarth and Talos share the title of Izmir with Pelennor. On and the fox equated with zero and Well, always remember, f- fox too is is the you know the Nordic symbol associated with Shaw, you know, and being a trickster like a tricky little fox kind mm. of thing. I think it's zero and it- also called on and the fox and the underking. Right, and what? So what was it? What equals what? R K equals okay, <laughs> but with like a an apostrophe kind of thing in the middle. Gosh. Hmm. All right. Let's just say, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's crazy. It's sick. Yeah, it's well Pelinor done. went by other names as Han- Hans the Fox. And that makes more sense now to him being a Cesarini kind of shore related character. Uh, dwarf Orc Theory. So King Dumak of the Dwarves called Dumak Dwarf Orc. It's him, isn't it? Called Dwarf Orc? Yeah. Um, and unless that means he's a... I don't get what the... Uh, like actual relevance is there although i'm pretty sure um in one of the songs of um wolfarth i'm pretty sure it refers to him as king do malakath that sounds um, really familiar yeah, yeah. and that kind of like blends you know it's another sort of i don't know i guess combining the two i've never made that connection yeah but unless so, maybe dwarfs and orcs are somehow related because, I mean, King Dumak of the Dwarves and then calling him Dumalakath kind of seems to imply, you know... Well, they're both elves. They're both myrrh. So I guess they are related, but... The, the weird thing about that is that if we go by the orcs originating from the trinamak Boethia confrontation, then you'd have the Dwemer, if the Dwemer are orcs, getting to Resdane at the same time as the Kaima, approximately the same time. Which weren't gets they a bit there confusing. beforehand? Like they, their origin story just doesn't really exist. The, yeah, they don't. Re- there's no real evidence. It's same with the snow elves, the snow elves and the um and the Dwemer that you just don't really know why they're. Uh, what about the Mayama? The same with Bosma. Uh, the, Mayama, the, the idea with the Mayama is that King Orgnum tried to rebel against whether you think it's Somerset or Old Maris, but basically he was a powerful lord who rebelled. And was kicked out, like kicked out of the island with all of his followers, and then they were kind of just like stranded in Pyandania. So they kind of have an origin story. I feel like most but... elves don't have a solid origin story at all. Mm. And if they do, then they've got there's like a few that it could potentially mm. be. Um, Tosh Raka is uh, Raka or whatever. That's just the Kapitan king guy that sort of became the dragon tiger god thing in akavir it's mentioned in, in the mysterious akavir yeah um warn that's the dragon uriel the Sev- uh, uriel the fifth will ride yeah oh, back yeah. on yeah. <laughs> uh warn and weathered note is that a note from morrowind it's a worn and weathered one 
yes. Yeah, it's from Morrowind. Is it in a bottle in the ocean? Which? Seems like a... So I haven't looked into this, but there's a theory that it was written by a drag. Apparently there's three of them. Oh, yeah, wow. it just sounds okay. like someone writing it's about... It's pretty long. Drowning. And... Yeah, so it's an in-game book. I don't know how much there is to that one. I'm... I mean, if, if it's written by a drag, which it, a lot of it points to, then it's very eloquent for a for a drag in this Is it time. about a well, dude that transformed into a drag? I am forever swimming around amidst the ocean world we call home. My limbs grow weak and weary as my eyes drift skyward into feet. I remember how warm the earth felt as I lived and breathed next to her beating heart. Is it maybe the dude, one of the dudes that turned into the ruddy man? Who was a human and then transformed into a drag dude. Mabes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Tal Os virus. As in Tal iOS like system, operating Tal-os system. The virus. I guess it could be the... Con- I'm pretty sure it's fanfic stuff, but the idea that it's like the way he functions is like a virus, like putting his... Um, code into other people throughout history and making um, pretty sure I can't remember if it even is explicitly called that in Coda or something or no something else the Dominion Prism text tract again written by Kirk Bride it's mentioned in there um, which is like I don't know where he gets off on making all this like mathematical I mean, look and stuff <laughs> here's, like. here's, here's another explanation that I found a comparison of Talos to a virus or operating system as having replaced Lorcan. He is the structural foundation of Mundus and can't be uninstalled. If he were removed, Mundus would collapse. Hmm. That, I mean, that's just someone's take. And yeah. Does what that do you, bring us to well, the what end you th- of this picture? Yes. Yeah. King of Worms equals the Under King. What do we reckon? Aren't they both in the same game? Yeah, they are. So so no. I reckon Good. it's bullshit. <laughs> so. and there's about six people who are the underking at this point. Yeah. Um, I heard this one. It's fine. I, I forget the basis for it, but 500 companions were all dragons. I didn't know all dragons, but like yeah, it would kind of make that. sense. I, I guess it would make sense as to why they could like easily push out all the snow elves and stuff. It's because they were actually dragons with the dragon cult and then they got established in Skyrim like but ugh, I don't know I don't really buy it I mean Wu threads an axe in, in Isgrimor's hand too and like the tail. I guess that could yeah. relate to that Draco Chrysalis thing like gaining dragon aspects and like I mean I could I could buy easily that there were some dragons that came over with them perhaps maybe like if you wanted to push that theory I feel like some but not all and uh, what about the dreamer can't wake up? So that's referencing the godhead. So can't wake up. I mean, if he woke up, then the dream would no longer be a dream, would it? Yeah, that's what I understand. Like, the, the dream doesn't exist without the dreamer, but the dreamer doesn't exist without the dream. That's how yeah. I understand. And that. you can't wake up unless you wake me up inside. <laughs> can't wake up. Yeah, it's it's some. It's, it's I can't remember the word. It was this, <laughs> it was this morning. I couldn't wake up. <laughs> All right, here, now we're going to start getting into some nuts stuff. Fargoth's ring. So, you know, when you start Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind, you find a ring in a barrel and this, and Fargoth's looking for his ring and you can give it to him. And he's like, thanks, buddy. I'll give you, my mate will give you a discount at the shop. Um, Should we hold off on talking more about that until we get to the last one? I I was going to say, whoever made this loves Fargoth because we got Fargoth as Vivek, we got Fargoth Ur on the side. More Fargoth. It gets, it's all Fargoth. It, it, I think it all <laughs> comes back. All of the Fargoth stuff comes back to one 4chan post. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know if we s- say that now or come back to it later. We'll get to, to it, it later. And keep the viewers engaged. So this next one is Scrib or Rib. Or s- I don't know. How do you Zrib? But um, apparently the altar of Zrib is an unmarked location it's in, in Skyrim. Skyrim. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Winterhold. But what? how do we know it's called Zrib? though is there a book saying mentioning it or is it just? i I think in the prima guide maybe oh this is this is where people speculate that the dwemer actually had a god 
um and then mm. there's this kind of like altar um with Dwemer architecture and people mm-hmm. think that Scrib or Srib is some kind of deity but they don't know who yeah i think there's for. a there's a, a bunch a bunch of skeletons like, you know, there off thing or it, but it looks kind of like people suspect i think there's like a I think there's a bunch of bones that, like, like suggesting sacrifices have been made there, but there's also a cave entrance filled with Falma, like, right across from it. So I feel like the Falma might be doing that. Yeah, well, we know they had a, a de- somewhat of a degree of freedom when it came to, like, creating religious monuments, because there's obviously, in Urkentand, there's the giant snow elf statue. Wasn't it made in secret? Um, I think it was. I th- um, I yeah. Th- ma- which is kind of crazy. I don't know how they made that in secret, but, you know... Yeah, but I mean, maybe this was also made in secret. Um, they, I assume, if they were part of their kind of enslavement, was to do maintenance and and you know, that like doing odd jobs. Maybe they learnt some aspects of like dwarven architecture and how to create it. Is but... there a book with Srib in it? I feel like there is. I don't think there's any reference anywhere. I could be making this up. Oh, hold on. What there's about a, there's uh, the temple of, of Srib? Is it a large Falma the... settlement? Is it the same thing? I thought it Probably. Right. See temple also of... Oh, the sightless of pit yeah. is the. But, yeah, but that's the, the thing right across from it. Yes. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm saying. So, like. Oh, I, I think the temple of Srib is a. It's a sublocation within the sightless pit. Yes. A mystery with pretty much no answers, I imagine. Yeah, okay. I don't know if you can really say anything about it. But can you say anything about Master Redshift? <laughs> I hate him already, whoever he is. Mars? What? More space stuff. What exactly is a redshift again? It's when, when you get the IRL. color red and you just sort of shift it to the side. It's kind of just... You know. It's a... Displacement of spectral lines. Oh, I don't even know why I'm bothering. <laughs> <laughs> lines towards longer wavelengths. Michael Kirkbride again, Imperial Library, uh, talking about the Magna Gi Pantheon. So Master Redshift documents the Pantheon of the Magna Gi. Okay. It makes sense that, yeah, that'd be a part of the Magna Gi. Okay. Well, there you go. There's your answer. Straightforward. Yeah. What about Easy. Riemann Cumcrackers? What do we think? <laughs> I'm hungry, this man. Is... <laughs> okay, well let's let's try nah, and analyze come on, this. There, there should right. surely be. A... Uh, here, here's a post. Okay, is that the American name for soggy come biscuit, on. or is it because it's got to be something to do with that? Excerpts. <laughs> it's not long and definitely worth the read. All will be revealed and then some. And then someone replied, "What WTF did I just read? Who's gonna Look. read it?" <laughs> um, Johnny, can you like control F for crackers or right. come and just see if yeah, anything like I'm, that's I'm, in there? I'm opening it and it's very long, so I'm gonna control. <laughs> F. Okay, what Classic. about crackers? Okay, cracked. Oh, there's cracked, but not crackers. Riemann. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. We do not want to read this on the YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, um, <laughs> let's just say, well, you know, the Cyrodiil, it, it X-rated? Cyrodiil Calm thing that um, uh, he did that okay. on some people as they fell. And after years of training <laughs> in the dib- shoot, he could do this without hands. I've tried it. It's not possible. It's theory is bullshit. <laughs> All right, anyway, that's where that comes from. <laughs> Sh- um, the Shoney missing... excerpts for anyone wanting to read that. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, how about some Dwemer misinterpretation? I don't that know what this means. Yeah, it's a very like... I but don't know. Google search. Maybe they're misinterpreting the purpose of Mundus or maybe it's about people misinterpreting the Dwemer's intentions. There's or... a post here. Someone's asking, what's the deal with the Dwemer and then purposefully, um, purposely misinterpreting things? Um. Well, like, like what? What would they have? As in, like gods and stuff. But they don't misinterpret, do they? Isn't it just like they just don't care? 
I mean, there's no one correct interpretation in, yeah. in terms of Let's that, just move right? to Magnus's so, regret. Well, that's, I guess, him regretting to be a part of the whole creation. And he's like, oh, that's it. I don't want to lose my power. I'm out. Mm. And then he rips through the tear and Mundus and becomes the And then the we've sun. got Tamriel's song, which we know kind of everything in Elder Scrolls is a can be seen as a song, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's because, like, the Elder Scrolls built a Tom, like, you know, like, Tolkien, I think, was, like, the first, like, modern fantasy thing or something, talking about how, like, if you read the Silmarillion, it's all about, like, it's this big song that started that creates the world. And while it's not as explicit in the Elder Scrolls, there's all of, like, the tonal architecture, swords singing, the, yeah. the key eye, the thorn, like, all of the metaphysical universe-bending powers all have to do with music, you know, the ascended sleepers and their big, like, flute trunk things, and, you know, it's a... It's a thing. <laughs> okay. um, Riemann expedition to the center of Nerm. So instead of going to space, it's like going to the core. Pretty sure Brendan Fraser was in one of those <laughs> movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's what's up. I, I, I'm sure that maybe there is something to this one. I, maybe I was always... Riemann, maybe he's a deep one. He's the deep ones. Is it underground? To center of Earth. Because I always... I mean, he's done like, you know, space program things, but that's not to the center. Journey of... to the center of the Earth, eh? Is that, is that just a... I don't even... <laughs> it's just your favorite movie, Scott. <laughs> it, I'm sure it's a play. I'm sure it's just a play on it. Um, anyway, new Akavir Amaranth. So I guess the idea that that either a new Amaranth would be from Akavi or that Akavi is a new Amaranth, like a new dreamer. God, I don't know how much that mm -hmm. stacks up. It sounds... I think they're just slapping words together now. Mm -hmm. The eight uh, mantle the dreamer. So is that trying to say that the divines, yeah. like the mantled the godhead? I don't know. I don't really uh, understand, yeah, where, how they have a direct correlation with the dreamer like their relationship has always been more with Lorcan. Mm. i tell you what um, we're doing pretty well like it's only starting to get really crazy down at fargoth uh like where we have kirkbride, we're starting to sorry, lose how, any apparently bearing. kirkbride has some kind of writings about the eight adra eating the dreamer or something it's very vague and ambiguous i don't know <clears throat> let's move <clears throat> on to the digitals uh, they're a bunch of um, characters from the from Coda. Um, I can't remember if they're the ones like with TVs for heads, <laughs> or or the holographic -y people. I can't remember. It's they're characters in the Coda. Right. In Good the, lord. The digitals. <laughs> Cherums. <laughs> right. Okay. What? Nice. Oh, Cherum's forgotten tapestries. Um. Let's let's leave them forgotten. Hold on. There is the Cherim is tapestries. The Emperor himself owns ten Cherim tapestries. Um because Cherim This is a book. So it's it's a Khajiit thing. I thought it was a poem. Um, Skyrim right? skill book. It is. Cherim was a famous Khajiiti tapestry maker who lived in Orkrest. At the height of his success, he had four factories creating replicas of his works, and his originals were sold for extraordinary prices. Righto. It's a and bit there weird. Some isn't forgotten it? tapestries somewhere. All right. Well, uh, scroll vault under white gold. I guess a so vault wait. of secret Elder Scrolls or something. I I don't yeah. think that this is true because I used toggle clipping to fly all around inside there for my <laughs> quest and I didn't see anything. Although, do you know what was really weird? I'll tell you something. You know how usually like, I don't know if they're called cells, but like rooms are kind of like on their own. Like you fly out into the black of a room. You're not going to run into mm -hmm. another space, one, right? Yeah. Well, you do. And, <laughs> and this, this really messed with me. I was in the Imperial Palace and I basically left from some really tall place anyway i kept on going down and down and down and then i saw this red light and i'm like oh my gosh what have i found this is crazy and i got it took me so long to get close to this red light and then i realized it was a fire and then when i finally ran into it it was the fire in the room where the elder scrolls presented to you 
when you're pretending to be Celia Cameron. But that room is connected to like some other one. Like they're in the same black space, just really, really far away. There's a few, th- yeah, there's in Oblivion especially. Like they'll create a space and then put a few different cells in the one yeah. space. I don't know if it's to save, I don't know if you like if if loading a cell this big, but you've got a space this big, if it's more efficient to put a bunch of different cells in that same space. Yeah, they're just pocket realms. Like I really thought I was about to find something of Oblivion, no one else right? found. And I was get That stuff happens all the time. Started. I'm like, what is that? And it's just like a barrel floating in space. Yeah. I'm like, damn. The barrel next, conspiracy. The next one is more guys first. And this one has an easy explanation, actually. But we just, it's a mystery. So... Queen Morgaya is the um, daughter of Queen Baron Zaya, and basically she was trying to get a, a marriage to King Reman Carudil, ruler of the Kingdom of First Hold on on Oridon. Assuming that means some, that's another name for Somerset, or is it not? Oh, like that's it's a one city. of the islands. It's a city, isn't it? Is it an island? The eastern Oridon. coast of Oridon is one of the fourteen islands. On Somerset. Um, but anyway, to secure the king's hand, she endeavoured to give him what he desired most, to speak again with a son who had died. To this end, Morgaya made contact with Manamako, King of Worms, and basically, with the help of your character in Daggerfall, a deal was struck. So Manamako held up his end of the bargain to return this person's son so she could get married, but she, and in return, Morgaya promised to give him her first, though exactly what this means is a mystery. So... To me, like when you say more guys first, it kind of seems like, I don't know, maybe it's just my head, but uh, like it goes straight to like, you know, virginity, like sex. That's kind of what it gets like her first, but like, I don't know. Like I can imagine that with like dark packed things, but otherwise I don't know what else that means. Well, well, um, Scott, could I just ask you, do you know what Nord's intercalpic lig world eaters means? Because that sounds like <laughs> the next iteration of Power Rangers. Come um, on, it does. <laughs> uh... Intercalpic league do... world eaters go. <laughs> I mean, the idea that they're intercalpic makes sense, but league, league, yeah. And world eaters. Um, I'm not really. Do they right. go from calper to calper, destroying everything like a virus? Yeah, like I guess if because if we're looking at kind of like how um, Tall Papa, you know, discovered you could walk sideways, and they created the far shores. And if Sovngarde is just like the far shores in that we've we said it like four times in this podcast, but like that that shore is creating an army for the end of the world. If uh, if we go on from the fact that it's like the dawn era is the ending and the beginning, then anyone who's in Sovngarde does survive the Kalpa because they're in this sideways place like Rutger found. But do they lig- and then they come back for the dawn? But do they but, but- lig world eat? <laughs> That part, I have uh, no idea. Good, good, good Moving go, on. Um, <laughs> the Dunma or Dwemer. Uh, nah, nope. come on. They're just so different. There's so many Sick. times in Elder Scrolls history where they've had interactions with one another. and Unless they were what? Kaima that went on to... Nah, it's just nah. How well, the Dunma and the, Kaima... the Dwemer never existed at the same time. What? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Well, well Dunma, yeah. like Kaima yeah, yeah, did, yeah. yeah. At the, at the, when the yeah. Dwemer disappeared, the Kaima yeah, yeah, returned yeah. it to Dunma, yeah. so it yeah. could be Technically. like... Well, we yeah. we did talk about the fact that if they were also orcs, then they would have had to have travelled to Resdane at the same time as the Kaima. So maybe the Kaima never existed and they were all just Dwemer. And, or uh, maybe, or maybe the Thalmor engineered the last Dragonborn's birth. <laughs> What do you think about that? Know, it's like some Star Wars Episode Nine stuff. I mean, why would they want that? Because they don't want the Kalpa to end and Alduin to fulfill his process and they want to do it their way by destroying all the towers. I'm going to put that down to it's a meme. Um, <laughs> and especially if the last Dragonborn sides with the uh, the Empire as well, it's probably not in the family's no. best interests. How about Maricardi created Tamriel? Like, as in the Maricardi selectives. I don't know. I mean, they created Tamriel as we... I mean, they messed with the timelines as we know it and did some stuff. All right, but maybe also Anu maybe has amnesia slash remorse. What do you think I wish that? I had amnesia, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's an actual... He's, a, he's one that might have something to it. Let's see if we can work with this one. Meridia is Lorcan's lover. 
Can you? Oh, work? I thought you meant in reference to Anu's amnesia and remorse. I was like, oh god. No, no, no. I mean, sorry, the next one. Can we work um, with that? Yeah, like the idea that she consorted with illicit spectra. Ah, oh, yeah. She was she was more on the side of Lorcan than Magnus and and the other star orphans, mm. and perhaps. Because Lorcan was the trickster who betrayed them all, the fact that she's consorting with him, yeah, may, mean, like that's the ultimate betrayal that means she's no longer a part of the main And he was considered a Phaedra, or it's just that he was the illicit spectra they meant and not. Yeah. Well, illicit spectra never explicitly says Daedra, right? And I guess, well, I guess like Lorcan, in a sense, is the opposite. Like he can't be a Daedra because he is like the fundamental ancestor. I mean, the idea that Nern is If it's a Daedric realm, realm then... Theory, yeah. yeah. But I, th I feel like, uh, yeah, it, of all the illicit spectra, it makes total sense that it could be Lorcan is the one that she meddled with, or, you know, consorted with. I had a theory that, because Lorcan is Shaw, or Shaw is Lorcan, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In, uh, yeah. what's his totem? The fox? And then mm -hmm. Kinnereth's totem is is the bird. And when you go to Sovereign Guard, the Hall of Valor, whatever it's called, is covered in bird motifs. And I was like, mm. maybe it's like a, the Taj Mahal. He built this thing in um in like reference to his his lover or well, his I guess wife. Kine was Kine was his wife, yeah. Mm. And um, Mara was his handmaiden. So yeah, like Kine. Yeah, that does kind of like the parallel to the Taj Mahal does make some sense. How... But wait, um, but Kine was the widow and Shaw was the one who died. So I guess like that aspect. Not literally his wife dying, something. but you know, he built something yeah. to be like, I love my wife yeah. so much. Look, my yeah. building's covered in birds. How about Akatosh, Nern, equals Nern, equals Oblivion? Duh. <laughs> That's good. That doesn't even, uh, we can just skip that one. Doesn't even. It's good stuff. Uh, how about Sothisil's daughter? Um, did he? Uh, did he, I don't. Did he have never any kids? heard of? So the seals I mean, I guess this is the conspiracy. Maybe he did. Oh, oh his goodness. cosmic daughter, Memory, who he himself gave birth to. I guess he gave birth to all the clockwork right. creations. I mean, I'm just of his so I was well. thinking. Did oh, he make some like? Did he make like some sex bots or something? <laughs> yeah, it's referenced um, in Sermon Thirty Seven. Yes, and also out of game, uh, out of license or whatever um so the seal was survived by his cosmic daughter memory who he himself gave birth to that's all i can see okay what about todd and head water is memory remember so he just gave birth to a bunch of water he just took a piss <laughs> <Waterbirds>. yeah. <laughs> he just had a break from his podcast uh the todd head this is the idea that todd howard is the dreamer right or the godhead yeah, mm -hmm. he's making everything. How much was Todd involved in actually creating law? Like, uh, did he play like much he, of he a role? He's been role since Morrowind. Green light a lot of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was. I can't remember how much it is in Dagger Four, but ever since Morrowind, he's been a very significant. Todd part. Howard is someone who I think is probably underrated at this stage, because people yeah. kind of just see him as the just the face of it and nothing much else. Yeah, I think a lot of the bad associations associations with Todd is just the fact he's kind of got no choice but to say the shit that the higher ups are telling him to say. I guess yeah. I don't know, but maybe don't. Well, say Well, how it. about uh, Mantell and Portal in the Iliac? Um, could this be um, talking about getting the Manteller and going to the? Oh uh, yeah, cars? yeah. I think we talked about that crops. last episode. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, man. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Scotch. Yeah. Come on. Well, in, in Daggerfall, it's said in the Iliac Bay, and in that game, you go to Aetherius to get the Mantella. It's, you go to the Mantella. And, and there's a portal Wait, at some hold on. point. Is it, just, is it not just a... Is it a play, though? Is this just a play? Either... I can't remember in Daggerfall how you exactly get into the Mantella and Croc stuff, but... No, do I. But... Is it just a play on the whole like earlier one, which was like Portal in the Nibane in the yeah, um, like the Shivering Isles Nibane thing. Basin, like yeah, to Shivering Isles. Is it just a play on that? I don't see. I have no idea. I don't know. I'm happy being wrong if it's not. Let's move on. <laughs> we'll go to Azura Hotel. What do you think? That was the thing in Turkey, right? 
Like oh, that's just yeah, an that IRL meme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's this <laughs> hotel actually... in Turkey with like a statue that looks like Azura because it's got like a star. Oh, in it's the but it's not intentional. Yeah, I think it was just a straight rip. Do you reckon Kirk Bright like, snaked it, it from some Turkish thing? I know a lot of his writings are like based on Middle Eastern and Asian mythology and stuff. I mean, this is like I think it's only like five or six or seven years old or something like that. It's I think it's modern. Mm. But I mean, I could be wrong. I feel I feel like it's a copy. I feel like they copied Skyrim. What 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 about the plot device realm? It's the realm where all the plot devices are from. That's about it, I guess. Um. Um. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. cool. Sorry. What? what is Wait. It? Okay, what? Sorry. What? Okay. For this, you need to find the picture of the statue because it's legit just a zero yeah <laughs> on this hotel <laughs> that's crazy what the hell that's sick there okay yeah i'm, um, I'm just reading i'm watching a let's play of going to the mentel and crocs <laughs> i think you say a let's play of going to the zero no, hotel <laughs> i'm saying i send you now to the mentel and crocs the safeguarded prison of the manteller so it's like you're being sent there um i i honestly think the next one in a way does have potential. The dwarves um, are dwar- uh, dwarves are dwarven dwarves metal. are dwarven metal because obviously that nobody's ever been able to figure out how to make dwarven metal. And I mean, even when I wrote the video on it, I wasn't one hundred percent sure it was the best ex- explanation about Kagranak. When with, like the idea we've said before is Kagranak planned their disappearance because it wasn't a disappearance; it was to transform the entire race into the barrier, the skin that surrounds the Numidium to make it. Mm. Um, protected from reality or, you know, reality. Um, so maybe not every Dwemer was utilized in shielding it and they just became the metal that was supposed to go into it, but they just like flopped onto the ground. Maybe. You know, into ingots, a bunch of scrap metal. So, metal. so if you find like Dwemer spoons or, or whatnot, or Dwemer coins, there's all people in there. Yeah, mm-hmm. so you just vor them. It's... You know, if you eat with a Dwemer spoon, you're just, I don't know who's eating I, a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, it still goes in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, how, YouTube. Anyway, what about the hist dream matrix? I feel like this we could we could. Does this go it. back to that that hist supercomputer thing? Yeah, I feel like you could connect it to that kind of stuff. Um, and and the I, because there are sorry, go Argonians who have visions when they imbibe the sap, right? Yeah. So perhaps they're like entering some like you know if, if it's a supercomputer and they drink some of the i don't know the ram and they like then they just <laughs> you know they're dreaming inside the hist's matrix i don't know what's l Al- it's all connected what do you think about l marug okay i found A-L. one obscure reference and it's on like warosu.org <laughs> it's like full just forum thread of people role playing and someone says ignorant churl i fling my shit at thee refrain now from presuming on matters you know nothing of <laughs> perhaps then the great monkey like m-o-n-k-e may be merciful enough to share his glorious truth with you so that you too might know all the wonders of our Maruk. how about that right uh, hmm. all right what do we think about the best one i also on this found list? someone the on mo- linkedin called al Maruk. that was my first result <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, moon come vaults is that Riemann again? Yeah. I, yeah like, maybe stuff. it's something like... Well, do you know how there was that vague thing before about, like, Riemann, some space station or something on the moon? Maybe he's stored... It's come for, like, a lineage. Just a sperm yeah, bank. Like a yeah, sperm. that's what I was thinking. Yeah, so maybe that they can create future Riemanns when they go to the moon and uncover the vaults. Right, and, like, a, like a sperm Yeah, bank. he's got, like, a sperm bank on the moon. Right, what about Manamakatosh? Sounds like a computer, eh? Yeah, it's like say. <laughs> it's the Hist. It's like Manamako and Akatosh as a computer it's the, program. It's the brand of Hist supercomputer. Oh my god. <laughs> the Manamakatosh. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm on Google, guys. I got I got high energy uh, fingers, low energy brain. Let's go. It's Michael Kirkbride. <laughs> Michael Who? Kirkbride, if you haven't heard of him, he's, a, he's that, that guy. Oh, that... yeah, yeah, I think he he writes some lore. Yeah. All right, Manu Makatosh. Um, there, the worm on the worm from Coda. It's not even worth reading. Okay. I'm out. Agreed. <laughs> uh, Kim Quantum Witness. 
or chim quantum witness however you we like. should get that law master on the podcast and grill him about pronunciation of things <laughs> just just grill him about it like, like <laughs> that sounds so funny no, i am the law master now <laughs> When, when, when I you say mentioned grill, doing that, I, getting I him like on. Interrogate, like not like tell you you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what it sounds like. Let's get him on and ambush him about. It. Yeah, <laughs> Shit that he has more authority on. It's like so instead of asking him law questions, it's just two hours of how to pronounce you things. Fancy yourself <laughs> now he's master, incorrect. Do you? Uh, well, do you know what Madame uh, Hoshi is? Didn't think so. All right, the Heimskia Dream Sleeve broadcast. I can't remember. I, maybe I'm making this up in my head, but I can't remember if this is something that happens in Coda or if there is some like playing broadcast because there's all kinds of like technological stuff. But maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe it's just talking about I don't know. People hear drums. I don't know. Like an internet broadcast. It's like Heimskia is the Alex Jones. Yeah, of like the space their time. And it's like yeah, right. <laughs> The next one kind of sounds like a pasta. Yeah, I'm like, didn't I eat this? <laughs> Romanelli. Uh, Romanelli. Tomato page. Um, what is that? Romanelli. Oh. No, Drew. <laughs> you just see this. Oh, it's not. Big... It's not in frame. I was just petting my bear. <laughs> oh, right. Bit bit weird. Um, sorry. Yeah. What Romanelli? <laughs> Can we see the bear? This... <laughs> He's got a koala bear. Oh, damn it. He's gonna leave it fake. Was that like a Valentine's Day thing? It's a uh, from right. IKEA. Oh, I've seen that. I was getting I've IKEA shopping, and he was buying some Swedish Romanelli. And uh... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Romanelli. Okay, Romanelli. I found some kind of mention of it. The original title for Skyrim back in 1998, <laughs> according to this one post. What? Because hmm. right. it was written about before that, and it was just called Skyrim. Um. Okay. Doesn't make any sense. Red guard Easter eggs. Hold the on. The blind I found god. Another thing, Romanelli. Um, uh, future games in the room at the beginning of the introduction. There's a bookshelf containing titles of past and future games in the Elder Scrolls series. The first two are Arena and Daggerfall. Then there's Morrowind, Oblivion, uh, and Romanelli. So like that was one oh, of those book that's names right. that was yeah the, at, at the start of Red yeah, Guard, yeah. right? It has that cinematic. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, okay. Next. Okay. So. The Blind God is apparently a god that's guarding the Mantellan Crux, who took the form of a giant skull. Didn't do very well. Mm. Considering we went there and took it. Yeah. Good job. Watch the sky. Dot, dot. Is that a reference to something they say about the dragons, the citizens or anything? Or in Skyrim? I feel or? like it is. Yeah, so. And then I feel like someone's like, dude, it means to look, at, look up because something's coming, man. Thalmor UFOs. It's also the, I found a. So yes, because it's the name of one of the songs in the I OST. I found a isn't creepy it? pasta. Watch the skies. Oh, well. true. I found some creepy pasta. Um, about what? The sky. Shadow Romanelli. Some spooky thing. It keeps about mentioning the sky. it. Is yeah, it this it, list? It, no, it's not. <laughs> but yeah, there's something that keeps saying <laughs> "Watch the sky" in this gravelly voice, and obviously, I'm not going to read the whole thing. It's like ten pages long or something. Okay, Tiber Septum was an orc. Thoughts. Oh, it'd be so much funnier if it actually said thoughts on the thing. The way you read it, I'm like, <laughs> like it says thoughts <laughs> after. Uh, I don't yeah, think I'm so. Yeah, I'm say no There's to that. There's like one. nothing on it, right? Yeah. At all. This is just. We're just getting silly like now. Like, there's enough. There's um, enough to. No, what, now. <laughs> what do you mean now? Between five hours of silliness. I draw the line after moon come vaults. Yeah. All right. That's where it started getting serious. Okay. All right. All right. Your house is safe now. That looks like the kind of That's thing from that the 36 pops up lessons. The it's at the end of one of the sermons. Right. Some po- I don't know. He's talking it's some poem Sermon about a house. 19. And he goes, "Your house is safe now." And the person goes, "But why is there dot dot dot?" And then he just keeps saying, "Your house is safe now." And the person's like, "Uh, it's not. There's weird stuff everywhere." <laughs> I wonder if it's the provisional house, something to do with that. I don't know what like the the, the meta meaning of any of that uh, is. Right, how about you type this in? The confession of Bomakuro one four three. Is it like a Reddit user that like trolled everyone and he confessed to okay, it or something? I found it. Tam- yeah? Um wait. 
After many years of serving the Elder Scrolls Online community, Tamriel Foundry has closed its doors. Website deleted. <laughs> oh, okay. So, um, but let Good me confession. Just, uh, oh gosh, I'm literally now I'm on some PDF file that's like looks like a movie script, like you know the way it's written in that what font. Tamriel Foundry. Oh. Oh, I'm thinking of Tamriel Vault or something. <sighs> the confession of Bomakura 143 went from script to final edit, but it was never broadcast for various political reasons. The series has been lauded as the finest culmination of Hjolti's nonsense in the Tamriels, and one that Igstast in dash E dash dash dash, despite harsh, crit harsh criticism from other quarters, TCI was otherwise a darling among its audience, both at home and in the armchair critiques of the Summerside liberal bloggosphere. Okay. This sounds um, like some more well, the next magazine one, tomorrow. In Drew's turned into a Dwemer. Look, stuff. he's a dwarf. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. All right, hold on. Let's keep going. Bug jar and Oh, Camel, come on. You know that. That's... you got a video the on it. bug jars. You? I, yeah, I do. I can't believe it's this far down. I asked, I asked a dev on Twitter if there was... I, I, I went through the Skyrim's credits and found every dev I could on Twitter and asked them all. I'm like, hey, I'm making a video about the bugs and jars. Is there any meaning behind them? And all these dudes were just like, can't say, can't say, can't say. And then this one dude's like, yeah, yeah, no, that, it's nothing. It was just uh, some cut content. <laughs> there's nothing. There's nothing secret. And then I went. I made a video about it, and then I went to ask him another question, and he blocked oh. me. So I think his answer was legit, and that he like got in trouble with the other devs uh -huh. or something for telling me. Right? <laughs> was it? Wasn't there like weird cross sections about their locations and stuff like that? I I can't really. Oh remember. yeah, it, it. I mean, you can you can join them all together, and it makes like a like a kind of three D pyramid thing. And then of course I slapped a big Illuminati meme over the top of that. Mm. Nice. But. I've got a whole video on it if you want to waste your time watching that. Trans Amaranthian travel. So I guess that's the idea of going between, like the Amaranth being the new dreamer, like another godhead kind of thing. So going between different godheads or incarnations of godheads or however that's going to work. It's like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. How, how about, how know, about Mokafa's three theorem? Who's Mokafa? It sounds like some like hair regrowth stuff. Mufasa, dude, you need some Macarthur's theorem. I'm let's, thinking of serum. Let's have a look. <laughs> so it's M O K A F A. I it's it coming up with like around. basically that... nothing. Although weirdly, it is giving me Elder Scrolls <laughs> results, but only on th theorems. I don't know why. Is that how you spell theorem? Yeah. I don't know. There's only. Oh, there's yeah. on the Tesla thing is uh, who's that? Is... I am Kenna Zombo Mokafa yeah. and I can prove that you do not exist. Oh, this um, is the yeah, please, this is please what I was do. talking about with Quick. athletic um mathematics or whatever it was called before. Um mm -hmm. he wrote out a mathematical formula which proved correct and Kenna Warfel Thomason vaporized on the spot. There you go. Maths magic. Hist antithetical amaranth. I love Wait, did you miss stuff. Dwemer created our universe, or you, you did that one? Oh, I mean, yeah, I guess I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, they didn't. But let's keep going. <laughs> yeah. Um, so his antithetical amaranth. I don't think anti. I don't even know what that means. What's antithetical? Like antithesis, Just like or... enemy of right. It's like. The opposite yeah. of something. Opposing force, the, yeah, I think. Like... Yeah. Uh, well, Wait, it, does that mean they were the dreamer and became in the dream? Is that what that's saying? I mean, maybe. I, I kind of read it as they are the, like, antithetical to the Amaranth. Or, like, you know, like, if you're going, like, oh, there's a good do god and, a, like, a evil god. Like, they're the opposite to the mm. Amaranth. Or, or... Yeah, I was just wondering if it meant, like, they did the reverse of the Amaranth. How about, how about section 22? You got to type Elder Scrolls with that or you get all kinds of things. Okay. Um, King Edward book uh, 11. Presently, Akatosh said, I favor the name section 22. <laughs> what? Hold on. 
Uh, okay, this so this is from a text that is in Daggerfall, King Edward Book 11. And there is a line here that says, um, it's about Mor Morilin interrupted with great drama. Surely you don't mean to imply that an elf can be overly stubborn. And the discussion dissolved into a period of laughter and teasing amongst the group. Presently, Akatosh said, I favor the name Section 22. Beach stared at him. Akatosh, I see what thou dost mean about thy difficulties with the poetic, if you will allow my frank opinion. That is the single worst village name I have ever heard. Akatosh sighed ghastly, then pardoned himself hastily to Beach. Um, then later on, I can see you should have 21 other sections first if you're going to name this place 22. Anyway, it looks like Akatosh wanted to name a place section 22 in some story. There, there you okay. go. Mud crabs run the world economy, though. Did you know? This is just a reference to the merchant mud crab, right? And the idea. You that, wish. I you guess. would love that because then you can move on to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. How's it not? Anything? Um, um, yeah, I'm just getting mud crab merchant stuff. Let's pass on it. Mm hmm. What about Night Mara, mm. as in like Night Mother? Oh gosh, that. But like Mara, like it maybe. Um. I got nothing. I. No, I got nothing. How it's about taking two how... words and slapping them together? <laughs> how about Reman Sayesi Gangbang? What do we think about gosh. that? If there's a video, I'll watch it. That's what I think about. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, something they film in Japan. <laughs> um, is that what I went to Japan and I was wondering what I watched was that <laughs> that's what it was um, Gemil or Gemil or hold on ringing any bells Running a I feel like we're so close to the bottom that there's got to be something serious going on okay, with all of this on. stuff wait it was an emperor Gemil in the is Gemil a name or merely a transcriptor of nationality or origin um talking about martin's this is like some law chat like people talking and nothing's yeah oh, it martin's seems like a septum dynasty mother? kind of yeah. weird unspecified thing out of yeah okay the idea yeah the idea is it's martin septum the only mom. source for the name of yeah. martin's mother is a foreman forum post by ken ralston in which caius Cassati suggests the name while visiting uriel's newly dug grave um the pig well, the only thing I can think of significant is, you know, how, like, they have the intelligent pigs on the Isle of Artem, like the Sigic Order. Mm, but what but, about the pig? I don't know. If you look at the... There's the pig children, but that's about right, orcs, the pig. I'm pretty sure. So what yeah, about the pig? That's Malakaf. So the theory involves Remonada Chapter 2, which has Blade of the Pig in its name and a supposedly metaphorical pig mentioned. Um... Uh, only later would it be revealed that Reynold did this thing to come closer to Talos and on Stormcrown, the glorious yet Emperor Tiber Septum only later still that he was under instruction by a pig. Man, this is just bringing me back to Reman Cow slash Various. <laughs> Uh, the pig is associated with the orcs who are sometimes called the pig children, suggesting that their father Malakath is a pig. Um, I think the pig has something to do with Trinomac. I don't know, maybe because he had to go rolling through the mud, if you know what I'm saying. In his transformation. You guys <laughs> in his transformation, you know. I don't know. Let's let's move are on. You, you aware of Uriel the Seventh's daughter? Is that the next one? No, I'm not. I mean Martin's such a bitch. Might be him. <laughs> Uriel seven. Oh, wait, Minisera is the first thing that popped up. But I don't that's from Daggerfall Queen. I was say, let me guess, it's a forum post. No, it's just came straight to a wiki, but um, I don't know why they oh. thought that. Well, the next one would be Talon Amaranth, and I think well, you, um, don't you that's referencing that arena. Don't you want to find out more about the daughter, or are you not? I feel like there's nothing to it outside that's the daughter, but I'd love to be proved wrong, honestly. Yeah. Let's move on. <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> Scott would love that. I'm going to move yeah. on. <laughs> um, to, yeah, so Talon Amaranth, I guess it's trying to make the idea that the uh, arena character, the eternal champion, is Amaranth. But aren't there I don't know three what the basis Talons? is for that. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. How about what, what's actually this sounds like there could be something the abortion or the black one. Like that sounds like there could be something right. that's legit. I hope so. What is the abortion um, or the black one? Reddit. It's oh, not they're talking actually about... talking about the iceberg. <laughs> they're like, I found this on the iceberg. <laughs> what is it? Um, it's a reference to an idea for a coda prequel called Diaz Irae that was never written. All that exists about it is a few mentions by Kirk Bride circa 2013. Most of the Tesla iceberg meme is trivia. It's not a statement or important Tesla, just a reflection on being around a long time and paying attention to discussions on this sub and 4chan. Well, that's the ultimate red pill of this iceberg. Now they it's tell useless. me. <laughs> N- now they tell us. Now they tell us after multiple, multiple hours of... of <laughs> House Redder on gravity control. Is this like the red, the Levitation Act? Maybe they implemented some gravity control to keep it in check. What do you think? Redder on uh, gravity um, control. Well, is there any... Did they even have the Levitation oh. Act in Morrowind? Nope. They didn't, right? Not on Vardenfell anyway. Well, work with me. Yeah. Not against me. <laughs> Actually, no. Yeah, it's only on Vardenfell. Because when you go to Mournhold, you can't levitate oh, there. And Mournhold's is, on, on mainland. Sorry, Mournhold. it is funny, but you know how House right. Redoran is like somewhat serious and like respects seriousness, but it's like the Redoran prize the virtues of duty, gravity, and piety. <laughs> but it's like, ooh, <laughs> gravity control. Right. Um... All okay. right, Fargoth cycle. Hit it, hit it, boys. What well, I f- okay? So this originates from a 4chan post. Someone posted a picture of Fargoth and wrote this. Sometimes I like to create a Bosma character <laughs> identical in face and hairstyle to him. Then, in the dead of night, pick his lock and enter his house completely naked. I murder him. I take his clothes and dispose of his corpse. The rest of the game is spent not taking quests, but traveling around Sedanine, simply being him. I sleep in his bed, eat his food, I walk in his same aimless pattern, and I talk to his best friend, Ariel. Though we maintain an air of friendly chatter, I can see the uneasiness in his eyes. All the villagers, they know they're watching me. I've passed 100 plus game days doing this. And so the cycle came around when... Someone responded to that basically saying, what if you did this for too long and the game evolved some artificial intelligence to take the place of a normal player who then took your stuff from the tree stump and continued to play the game? Or even worse, murder you and take your place, creating an endless cycle of Fargoths. I Discuss. have died more deaths than you could <laughs> ever even hope to fathom. My eternal <laughs> torture will come to an end soon. You've underestimated me. You always have. And it's far goth. Super zoom in. I feel like we've been duped. Well, that's the end of it. <laughs> I think that would be I the perfect like clip on Twitter to advertise this uh, podcast. Is just Drew reading that <laughs> with text on screen, <laughs> like not actual video, just text on screen and far goth's face. Or yeah, or just use that picture of far. It's funny if they the, don't know the you're circle. reading from a post though. <laughs> You're just <laughs> making it up. It's your story. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, okay, yeah. Cut it directly after yeah, I yeah, say, yeah. and this is yeah. what he said. <laughs> All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the <sighs> Iceberg podcast. This Thank. is, I mean, I'm very happy about it too, boys. I'm just, oh, I'm beside <laughs> myself. I'm thrilled. But you can't see that I'm thrilled because <sighs> this iceberg killed me. <laughs> I'm relieved. You know, oh, it's man. like necromancy. It's like free at last. Can I delete this picture of the iceberg now? <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's going to like corrupt my computer. All I right. Think. Well, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, social media links are in the description below as always. And we will nerd out with you again in the next episode.